Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly fate weaver this evening, because today we are carrying, actually we're not carrying on, we're carrying on with a series of games we've been playing with a new channel favorite, and that would be Ryan Vernier's a very cool Blackbirds gothic fantasy RPG. And uh, with me tonight are two New Blackbirds ready to join the flock. Uh, I'll go the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing today. Uh, first up, we've got Darren. Yeah, Darren here. I'm playing Adelaza Lavard, is it? Um, <clears throat> uh, don't know much about the character, but I'm sure we're about to find out a bit more about her as we go along. Nice. And uh, playing Adelaza's uh, stalwart companion is John. Hey everyone, I am John, and I'm playing Ferkus Kazal. Um, and for what I hear from him, he is a, uh, a Nephilim, uh, descended from some shadowy figures in the past with a debt due, and he hears subtle whispers yes. that uh, will decide his fate if he chooses to follow them or not. <laughs> yes, so um, what I will say uh, from the outset is, as well is um, I was very generously uh, gifted a copy of the Servant of the Gods edition of this by uh, Ryan uh, the game, our, our stream and our sessions aren't sponsored by any means, but uh, he did uh, very generously send a copy of this. I had actually been, at the time, trying to find a copy of the Servant of the Gods edition to pick up myself. So this was, I would have picked this up regardless of whether it, uh, whether I had wanted to, uh, or whether I had, um, you know, got a free copy from Ryan or not. But uh, that is what we have. So, um, the, again, the game's not sponsored or anything, but this just happens to be a game I'm really, really <laughs> enthusiastic about anyway. Uh, and we thank uh, Ryan for his generosity. Um, and also, this means I have my DM screen, Finder Fate Weavers screen. So, guys, let's talk about what um, Blackbirds actually is. So, uh, Blackbirds is a game where, uh, again, it's, it is a gothic fantasy RPG. And uh, they give a, a brief uh, description of what they think gothic fantasy is. And I thought, I, with the other guys, I've gone through this just to give you a, a sense of what the authors think, how this distinguishes itself. And then I've got something to add afterwards. Uh, so it, this is a section uh, five of the um, core rulebook, a dark, darker, grittier fantasy. The subgenres of fantasy can be challenging to chart a labyrinth of interlocking ideas more incestuous than a pedigreed royal family. Blackbirds is a darker, grittier fantasy and can be summarized as an alchemical reduction of three literary styles of fiction. Low fantasy, epic fantasy, and grimdark fantasy. The dead rise, magic is real, and a concealed dagger is as deadly as a polished longsword. Nobility and morality are in no way related. Every battle is a matter of life and death. Very little is guaranteed, especially the lives of the characters we like. But there are romantic elements, and a doomed world may also still be beautiful, permeated as it is with melancholic charm. Low fantasy denotes the sense of grit, excitement, and realism. Uh, while there are no orcs or dragons to slay, there are numerous epic fantasy elements to be found within the pages of this tome. Uh, creatures whispered of in folklore and spun into campfire song walk among humanity. Long forgotten doors to the odd, the world of magic, clatter open, and the magic locks meant to imprison unspeakable darkness give way. It's time for prophecy uh, set in an age, sorry, a time of prophecy set in an age where the candle of hope burns ever lower. Uh, and undoubtedly, the elixir's most dangerous component is the smoldering portion of grim dark fantasy, black and endless like a thousand starless nights. Eldritch creatures permeate the interstice between realms. The gods humanity worshipped are dead, and a terrifying new hierarchy has taken their place. Magic suffuses the world, but to delve into its workings requires summoning and bargaining with mysterious and puissant entities from beyond the confines of reality. The Blackbird setting is a skin stitched from cosmic horror gently fitting over a period similar to the late Middle Ages. Now, the one thing that I would add to that, that I think is what, where Blackbirds distinguishes itself from a lot of other grim dark games, is while the setting is grim and it is a very, it's exactly as I say, if you remember how dangerous uh, Flames of Freedom was, it uses the same Zweihander powered system, so same, similar type of thing. One thing that sets your characters apart, though, um, 
the name of the uh, game comes from what your characters uh, represent, which is uh, fragments of fate that found their way unbidden into unsuspecting heroes. When the gods died, the way that the gods died is um, a conspiracy uh, of um, individuals who have been, come to be known as the oligarchs stormed heaven by effectively climbing the world tree, Yggdrasil. And they destroyed that in the midst of doing that. And after the gods died, they killed the three Norns, the, the kind of gods of fate. And as the Norns died, fragments of fate and embers from the burning world tree spread out like birds flock, you know, flying off from a tree. And those fragments of fate lodge themselves into various individuals who now find themselves subject to fate. Every one of there's a couple of the oligarchs who are described in the book. This is 12 years after something that's called the War of Empty Thrones kicked off. The setting for this uh, was uh, a republic that lasted for about a thousand years. It is now known as the Carcass Nations. Erebos used to have a bunch of different uh, kingdoms and nations in it. Uh, but for the last 10 or 12 years, there has been seemingly endless war. Each nation affected in a different way than what uh, its neighbors are. Where our story will take place is a place called Elkland that has been involved in a state of civil war for the last 12 years. Um, as a result, you know, different counties have changed hands different times. So the whole place, there's not a single uh, stitch of, of land that has not been affected by the... Uh, effectively, the you know the different factions fighting one another and uh, over the spoils of the land. The people, in particular, are the ones who are affected most. Two years ago is when the gods died. That's when the I think it's the uh, the it's not called rekindling, the extinguishing. I think is what they call it. Um, the gods never answered. Like they weren't, you know, like Forgotten Realms or you know D and D style gods. So they were they were present and powerful things, but they didn't. Uh, you know, f uh, directly intervene with the world, uh, except for in sort of like folk tale or fairy tale kind of ways. But there's descriptions of the oligarchs. The oligarchs are going through a process of kind of like corrupted apotheosis. Uh, they have not yet manifested as replacements for the gods because they have been driven mad and their bodies have been warped by the unfathomable power of the gods. But the influence on the lands is still felt. And in those two years, that's where Farrakis, you began hearing that, that voice and feeling the, the, um, the pull of tithe. Um, it also means in the game, what you would do is uh, when you're setting up the different tiers of play, at each of the tiers, you go through what's called a dooming. And you sort of set up like a mystic vision that everyone takes play or takes part in, all the characters take part in, that sort of sets what the, is likely to happen in the coming uh, tier of, of play. What I think you guys have come together on, uh, you are two, uh, you know, ne'er-do-wells. Um, I think that you are, uh, I, the way I pictured it was sort of like, you know, a Fafford and the Grey Mouser type thing. You guys go around, get an adventures, you know, um, but you've never got two coins to, to rub together. Um, you'll notice that you've got very limited gear right now. Um, I believe you have like uh, think Farrakis might have two shivs you can't even afford a dagger at uh, this point got a throwing dagger it looks like oh there you go okay a throwing dagger um, yes. and Adelaide I think you've got uh, your long sword and I can't remember if you've got any what other stuff you've got but very limited in gear um, the reason I say that it's where this differs like that I think a lot of the tropes you're seeing in the setting are probably similar to what you see in a lot of sort of doomed fantasy things the way this game uh, differs uh, in my mind is at the end of each of the descriptions of the oligarch section when they in the rule book they say well and because the god they've taken on the power of say the god of beauty if you kill this oligarch then everyone loses the ability to taste food and everyone loses the ability to appreciate beauty and blah 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 but it always ends with unless someone else takes it and that, um, that degree of hope and the rules, the way they treat your characters mechanically, like everybody else in this game is subject to the same brutal rules that you played with in uh, like our uh, Flames of Freedom game. You know, everyone else, a dagger, you know, can kill you. You are the only ones who escape that because of fate. Because you are, a, uh, there's something, and it's not that you are predestined, you're not a child of prophecy or whatnot it's a fucking fluke 
that this ember of fate lodged itself in your characters, but you are agents of fate, and there is hope for this doomed world. So that's the thing that, to my mind, makes it uh, a slightly different game from from bog standard sort of you know and again no slight against those things that's that's great for games that want to hit that tone but the pitch darkness or the grittiness of the setting is offset by this possibility of hope and you know uh as we all know lights shine brighter in darker situations so it lends the possibility for true heroics for your characters your characters, on the other hand, I don't think are particularly heroic. You're not criminals by any means, uh, but uh, where we're going to be picking up is you guys fleeing. And you were serving with an army that was annihilated. Uh, you sort of came, you know, um, I don't think you were fighting the front lines. Perhaps you were, there was some warning you got. Um, but you guys have both had a persisting vision of a... Uh, of a lone tree and you've seen one another standing in a field before this and for that reason um, when you guys first came across one another in uh, Elkland you recognized you know that uh, you did not have visions before you've seen one another now and that sort of have kept yourselves together um, let's quickly talk about the mechanics in this are going to be very easy to understand since we played um Flames of Freedom last week. Uh, the game plays very much the same. Uh, you guys do, instead of coins, you have access to what's called a fortune pool. One of the things I fucked up last time, we only had one fight last time, but at, in uh, Flames of Freedom, at the end of a fight, all the coins go back to you. Um, so in this, instead, you start with them. So you guys start with, there is, we count up the number of characters who are not ice, the kind of the settings version of elves. Uh, we count up the number of non-elves in the party plus or uh, ice in the party plus the fate weaver and then um, We multiply that by two that tells us how many fortune points you have six fortune points to start and uh, I have zero misfortune point otherwise it works just like the fortune pool and flames of freedom goes back and forth you spend one and I get it back There are some additional things you can do with your points in blackbirds though you know, you can re-roll stuff. You can modify a scene. Uh, you can um, uh, make it automatic six on uh, on damage. Um, you can uh, immediately improve your peril condition by one. Something you couldn't do in uh, flames. You can get an extra AP, uh, but you need to spend that on your turn. You can't spend it on someone else's. So if you want to have that extra defense, you need to make sure you spend that beforehand. Uh, and then there are three ways that you can alter fate just like um what do you call it uh if we're keeping with the theme of the th the three norns so you can use Erd's voice and alter the past by uh, adding a flashback scene to add something in you can alter the present this is the same thing of of uh using verdandi's embrace uh changing the an element of this of the present or you can use skull's vision and ask me about something from the future there are two other things you can do with it. Uh, one is you can treat uh, your weapons for one scene. Let me make sure I got this right. That you can treat them as if they are enchanted for one round. Um, nope, nope, nope. That's a talent I'm thinking of. Uh, you move up uh, your ladder by one, and then uh, you can also uh, replace a technique. So one of the ways this differs from the, uh, what do you call it, from uh, Flames of Freedom, uh, you have talents and you also have something called techniques. The talents, if you were playing this in person, what we would do is, uh, I've got my, my cards now, which I love, my talent cards and technique cards. At first tier, you have one slot for each. So what you would do is select a talent. These are uh, Farrakis's talents. One of my talents, this one is Prowler. Or this is a, uh, oh, Finesse. Uh, and then Prowler is my technique. Talents give you a persisting bonus. You put it, yeah, so for instance, Finesse gives, uh, you can use your Skullduggery in place of Intimidate or Charm checks in a skill test. So long as that is slotted, you've got access to that ability. 
And then techniques, each of you has two different techniques. So you will need to select one of those to start being slotted. Each technique generally gives you three different options. And one of them is what's called an extinguish ability. What an extinguish ability is, is an exceptionally badass thing. Like it might let you kill anyone in that's adjacent to you. It might let you kill a certain target automatically. Uh, there are certain powerful adversaries who are immune to extinguish abilities, but what it generally does is it uses up three of your AP, and then once it, it becomes extinguished, it means that talent is no longer accessible until you do what's called a rekindling. You have a, a, a chance to catch your, catch your breath. You rest. The other thing you can do is you can spend a fortune point to swap out any one for another. That can be done at any point unless it's extinguished. If you've chosen to extinguish things, then that remains until you get a chance to take a rest at, with a rekindling. When you're rekindling, then you can freely swap your talents and techniques out. What, you guys are starting characters, so I've purchased one talent, two techniques for each of you. But as you go up, you gain access to two more. One talent slot, one technique slot. And your deck gets bigger of what you can draw on, so you get lots of opportunity to, to mix and match stuff. If it is slotted, you have access to all of those abilities. So, for instance, um, if you put in, say, Adeliza, your Agitite Swordsman or Swordsmaster, that means you get access to the 1 AP uh, Borovoy's Guard, where you spend 1 AP and then every dodge or parry action, it costs zero for you. Uh, you have um, Mistilov's Open. Uh, zero AP, uh, you spring into action, you can't use reactions, but you'll lose all penalties for making attacks beyond the first. Unlike Flames of Freedom, you can make multiple attacks in the round, but the second one is at minus 10, the third one's at minus 20. Uh, and then you can see your extinguish action is Alianor's Spite. Uh, the Blackbird circles the enemies in a slow, threatening posture with sword in hand until the end of this combat scene. Any enemy entering or crossing within and the little symbol there that's on there, it's X strides. Uh, I don't think the symbol's on the, the one on your character sheet there, but it's on there. That's because you are from, instead of professions or classes, it has paths. Your Adelaide walks the path of bow and blade, and Faricus walks the path of subterfuge and shadow. The further you go along your path, like as you gain levels or gain net tiers, you can choose to walk different paths and mix and match. But if you dedicate yourself, you get increasing benefits from it because some of your techniques uh, relate to how far along your path you are. So what this means is uh, uh, the one, so one stride of the Blackbird's position, they are struck down in a flash and instantly slain. If you take any action other than maneuver, this will end, uh, this, will end this uh, effect. So, and uh, Farrakis has got a similar one. Like, there's one that allows him to, um, like, I think automatically. Uh, Prowler. Something. Yeah, adieu. Uh, you extinguish. If you're fighting alone, immediately end the combat and describe how you get to safety. That just happens. That's another way where these characters definitely, f I think, feel a cut above uh, your standard character is uh, you have the you know, those incredible abilities. Now, the way, because we cannot slot them, the way that we've been tracking them, if you go to your main tab uh, for your character, basically just have um, open, you see that on the top right, uh, there's a little triangle symbol that allows you to uh, open and close the tabs. Yes. So keep anything that is a talent, you can keep open because that you already, already have that. For your techniques, just keep open the one that you've got slotted right now. And close the other one, so then you'll know which talents, which techniques you have access to. If you choose to uh, reslot them, uh, so like for yours, uh, John, you got Prowler and the Unblinking Eye. Um, Prowler gives you plus ten to your stealth checks as long as it's it's slotted. You don't need to concentrate on that whatsoever. So, not if you're sneaking your way around here, that might not be a bad one to start with. And okay. uh, for Adelaide, just the. Uh, Longsword uh, technique, that's the other thing is you, some of your abilities come from uh, your paths, others, uh, every weapon in the game has a technique you can also pursue. Uh, the Agitite Swordsmaster might be the more defensive one to start with because you gain access to that ability to spend one AP and then do as many dodges or parries as you want in the round. 
Uh, your duel you can leave open as well because that talent slot, that's a different slot from the technique. That's always active. Same thing with your lone wolf benefit. You automatically get that. Each of your characters has a uh, ancestry uh, boon as well. Adelaide, yours is that lone wolf ability. So you will do... Um, how does it work again here? Uh, when you're engaged with multiple foes uh, or when there are more... Uh, foes than the fate bound companions you do an additional dice of damage so when you're outnumbered you're even better uh, at what you do and once between rekindling you may automatically resolve a damage roll as if it had rolled a six causing it to so automatically add plus six uh, to your uh, things so that's effectively like once a day that's in addition to spending a fate point you could spend a six for that and then also spend a fate point to get a six on the next dice and then roll your damage cool um, and for yours, Fericus, uh, you have what's called Odd Sight. So you can, that is just like the ability to shift your perceptions into the odd, into the uh, mystic world. Um, you also have something called Whispers of Stolen Lore. This comes from the specific um, court that your ancestor bargained with. In this one, once between rekindlings, uh, you can immediately know the location and purpose of an ancient hidden entrance, trap, object, or being. Uh, the, uh, the target must be over 99 years old, and you must be physically near it. Um, what is revealed is entirely at the discretion of me, though. Okay. So that is what you have access to. You also, um, Farrakis, because you are a Nephilim, you do not have fate. At least not in the same way that uh, Adelaide does. Adelaide, you also have an ability called Fate. It is a coin you would use, and uh, you can use that to just not die or to, you know, get yourself out of some exceptionally dangerous situation. And then what we do is at the end of each session, you'd flip your Fate coin. If it comes up heads, you get access to it again next session. If it comes up tails, you don't. And then next time you roll, you have two chances to get it back. And then after that, if you fail, three chances to get back. And it keeps it at three until you get your fate point back. Fortune always uh, refreshes at the start of every game. So that's the generalities of the game. Let's talk about the actual adventure. So I'm going to bring you over to where you have been walking. Oop, let me put this on the map layer here. So, I guess before we jump in, do you guys have any questions? Yes. Yep. How does surprise work? Surprise is uh, very much like other games. So long as the uh, characters are not aware of you, uh, they cannot defend. Gotcha. I was just curious on the... Uh, one of the abilities is like one target surprise enemy who's engaged with the Blackbird. Yeah. So, Farrakis, like you're making use of, uh, just like in as Vihander, uh, you, when you make your checks, remember they're contested. You check the degree of success, and then you add your uh, related ability bonus. If you can sneak up on someone and find them unawares, you've got lots of just awful stuff you can do to them. So, so engaged means they're not aware of me, but I just moved into range to hit them? Correct. Gotcha. All right. So then, uh, any other questions, guys? Huh? Good to go. Okay, so our scene opens with our two boon companions trudging their way along through uh, a muddy forest. Uh, it is clear that this is not a commonly trod path, and uh, I think you guys move past what you see in here. There are some bodies hanging. Um, as I said, Elkland has been a very, uh, a very unfortunate um, place, and seen has seen uh, more than a decade's worth of uh, of tragedy. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is, uh, if you could please give us a, you know what I love is screens with in skill based games that have the full list of skills on them. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, toughness. Would you each give us a toughness check, please? Toughness it is. Uh, difficulty rating? Uh, difficulty rating on this is going to be uh, standard, so zero. Okay. Um, the voice is be under brawn. Driving me. <laughs> yeah, I can see it there, but... Is it open for editing, perhaps? Oh. Let's see here, that sometimes... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, standard, did you say? Standard, standard? please, yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, Farragus, first off, do you want to spend a fortune point to re-roll? Since I'm unaware of the consequences of failing such a check, would it be in my best interest? I think you'll be fine. Of just taking it? Yeah. Sure. Okay, I, so then... I imagine the uh, the voices of the recently dead are just hammering the back of his mind and causing him to misstep all the time. Uh, well, he's, he can't necessarily speak to the dead, and the, the outsider's voice is definitely not the dead. They are something very different and much more unfortunate. If you mean metaphorically, yeah, then metaphorically. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, so what I'd like you to do is uh, Adelaide, give us a 1d10 plus 1 roll, and Farrakis, give us a 2d10 plus 2 roll. Okay, so 12. Oh, Farrakis, how does that compare to your, for both of you guys, how does that compare to your peril threshold? Combat, right? Under combat, yeah. Oh, it seven. exceeds the first one, so seven's mine. But not the second. Okay, so then if you guys could each drop your uh, peril threshold down by one. This is the exhaustion of what you've been traveling through. Gotcha. So, so you then, can picture then, you are uh, trudging along here. Now, did I remember to load something in here? There we go. I did. I have my moments. So this has been exhausting. It's wet. Um, and the peril represents just the, you know, the toll that this has taken on you. Farrakis, uh, it's hitting you a little harder than it is um, your companion, but you're still, you know, you're made of tough stuff. You guys have taken this back path because you were avoiding um, a... You were avoiding being caught as deserters by either side, either the retreating army that you used to be part of or the army that was attacking. Both of you have decided this is just fruitless. I'm not sure you even remember the name of the guy that you were fighting for at this point. What you do know is that you barely got away with anything. Yeah, I imagine Farragus warned him that he sent something wrong and they didn't listen, so he said, screw these guys, we're out of here. <laughs> okay. I mean, you are much less... That, at the start of this campaign, uh, you are... Like, there's no way you're a, in charge of anything. You're a Oh, no, no. Grunt. I mean, he, he was like, I sent something really bad and... We're not sticking around for this bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then um, what you find is, um, you know, you, the, you do a plan in mind, though. Uh, there is a place, a uh, town nearby called uh, Col uh, Colwendine. Colwendine is a city that, uh, Farrakis, you are certain that you know someone where you can get work and get yourself, you know, get yourselves back on your feet. One of the things you do in the game is uh, money is abstracted in this. You don't have, um, like, gold coins or whatever else. What you instead have is um, uh, either patronage, uh, where someone is a patron for you, and you're able to access certain, you know, gear and whatnot uh, at that level or less, uh, or you have what are called spoils, which are kind of things you can trade in one time to be able to cash in for stuff. Right now, you guys have zilch. And the reason that's important is because it speaks to where you can sleep, what kind of environment you can be in, and that relates to how fast you're able to recover certain things. So uh, right now, you are penniless, you have no place to sleep, and uh, like you couldn't even afford a shitty inn at this point. This is squatting in the streets kind of situation. But if you can get a patron, patrons just all suddenly, all that shit's paid for for you. So that is the plan. Uh, or at least that's what Farrakis has been seeing for the last, you know, 40 miles that you guys have been traveling at Alaysa. Um I think it was his plan to join this army last time, too, so I'm not sure you would want to necessarily trust in that. But So what you guys find is uh, you finally reach a point where, uh, trudging along in the mud, uh, the th it suddenly seems to, to go down, and then there is a retaining wall 
at the bottom that um, is a road. And this is what Farrakis has been uh, promising. One of the downsides to the uh, the persisting war of empty thrones and uh, the the civil wars that's been going on, um, it is called, oh, there is a name for it, which I don't remember offhand. It's like the Betrayer's War um, in Elkland. But uh, because armies have been marching and roads have been built and roads have been washed out and, and whatnot, um, it's very hard to remember where things are because things look so different. Villages are burned down or populations are relocated or, you know, uh, new fortifications are built up. So, uh, but this road, Farragut, you're fairly certain this is only a few days off from reaching uh, Colwendine. And then, then, you just need to talk to your old buddy. You guys will get back on your feet. So, scrambling down this muddy incline, you guys get down to the road. And it is only, uh, now you will want to be mindful of any kind of guards or whatever else that are going by. They don't, can't necessarily, or at least they shouldn't necessarily just arrest you, but in these times, who knows? You may be able to talk your way out or fight your way out, but uh, be mindful of that. What you're mindful of, Adelaide, is how late in the day it is. The rain is still coming down. You're drenched. Uh, if you don't find somewhere dry you could probably make a lean to but that's what you've been doing for the last two nights and it is not pleasant and if you have to eat one more you know uh poorly cooked stringy old rabbit uh for dinner i'm pretty sure your uh you know your violence may find a different outlet but fortunately you guys do see something not far ahead on the road up on the left let me show you Now, these were something that were, you know, uh, a decade ago, much more common to see. And those are roadside inns. Uh, unlike... Oh, resize this. There we go. Okay. Now, the illustration will lie to you. Because... There are no living signs of anything around this inn. Let me bring you over, guys. Oop. So this is the inn. Uh, unlike the illustration, there is no warm, you know, nice, well, welcoming fire outside. There is no horse outside. There is a destroyed wagon. Uh, there are broken windows in all of them. It doesn't look like it's been burned down at any point, but it does not look like it is being operated. However, it does have a roof, albeit with several holes in it, and it uh, is likely out of the rain. So, uh, you see this up ahead. Any concerns that you may have, any paranoia that you're putting in about uh, ambushers uh, that you may be thinking of, or Potential Fergus. other squatters that may be in there. All that stuff Fergus. is valid. So, Fergus scratches his head and looks at it. He's like, do I remember this being here? Oh, sure. You, you know, that's a great opportunity. Why don't you give us a... Let's see here. Supposedly he knows this shortcut. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's going to be a folklore. Let me get my modifiers here. Ah, perfect. Um, you are from here. Why don't you make it your routine, please? Plus 10. So folklore at mine at plus ten. Could spend a fortune if you'd like, or yeah, sure. Let's make this interesting. Okay. So give it a try. At plus ten. Boom. There you go. Yeah, you remember this? Uh, there is a uh, uh, there's like a retired mercenary uh, named Garrick who runs this place uh, along with his wife and a bunch of kids, or at least. He did at one point. How many years ago was that? So many of them have flown by, but yeah. You, what you knew is that this, like, he, uh, it was one of those places that, that survives because you don't need a bouncer. You know, you need to have two things, uh, food and ale and whatnot for those who are visiting and the ability to deal with people who cause trouble. Man, it might have been actually before the, before all of this happened that you were last by here. And now it looks... Uh, abandoned and in shoddy repair. Definitely, yeah. 
He's like, oh, I wonder what fate befell these people. Well, probably worse than us if we don't get inside. So? Yeah. I've already been walking ahead. Okay. The time said that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just a That's little right. bit of paranoia as uh, Convericus like look into the uh, the ode. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Get uh, a sense of this place. Yep. Why don't you give us a? Uh, I mean, uh, like from from a distance. Yeah. Why don't you give us a scrutinize uh, check, please? It's under perception. There we go. And this will be, um, I think, standard. Yeah, I failed. Failed. Okay. You want to spend a the dice are against him. Fortune. No, I do not. Mm, it could be mixed up. You know, like the odd. Uh, it captures the uh, the like emotional resonance of the world as well too. Like when you look into it, you're able to see all sorts of different things. And I, I think that um, it's hard for you at this point to distinguish your own emotional connection to this place. It sounds like you might have had uh, favorable memories of this. That might be coloring what you're seeing here. Cool. And what you hear, uh, Farrakis, as Adelaide is moving forward and you've shifted, what does it look like? Uh, fe the the uh, Nephilim, just like the, um, uh, you know, like uh, tieflings to in, a, in a degree, all have some kind of, now that the packs have become due, some unnatural thing about them. It's not obvious necessarily, but there is something. I, I think whenever he tries to look in the spirit world, he gets this kind of... Uh... Uh, like his eyes go bruised and little uh, black lines follow his veins from his eyes love until it. he uh, shuts it off. Yep, love it. Okay. So you do that and you uh, shift out. Uh, and it's difficult to tell whether it's your own, uh, your own, you know, emotional connections tied up with it. But this place, there's, uh, yeah, it, it's tough to tell. Uh, so Adelaide, you are making your way up. Uh, why don't you give us an awareness check, please? Just standard. Okay. Not great. <laughs> I'm <laughs> keen to that in fire. Now. I don't care what it looks like, what it smells like. I'm going in. Okay. So you, uh, you, you know, you spare a look at this, and the only thing you can see is a place to to rest your head. You easily walk your way up those steps. They creak. Uh, going along, Farrakis, uh, why don't you give us an awareness check as you're yeah. making Yeah, he snaps out of his sight and starts scurrying after. He's like, wait, <laughs> don't go alone. Uh, awareness. <laughs> oh, so close. On the close. Uh, did you want to spend a fortune point on that? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, we'll play it as it lies. See, so you, uh, you go racing up behind and you guys are inside. Um, what you find uh, once you get inside uh, Farrakis on the main floor is... Um, it, the place has been trashed at some point. Um, it looks from the interior here that this place may have been, um, it may have been laying open and laying fallow for, for quite some time. Um, it seems as if there's been several people who have made use of this place at different stages since it fell. Just based on the, you know that Garrick would never have allowed people to have truck him as much mud in here as, uh, you know, as is the, Okay, so that's, that's actually kind of strange. You look down, and there is, obviously, Adelaide has tracked some mud in. She's walked over to one of the last good chairs, you know, giving it a, a little testing, and then thump down into it. Um, but there is some more recent mud caked in here as well. Not a day old, but probably not much longer. It doesn't have the dust uh, laid uh, on it. And it seems like there's quite a few in here. In fact... No, it's probably nothing. There is a hearth in here, uh, and there's plenty, uh, while other visitors seem to have broken, uh, you know, most everything they can come across to be able to toss firewood in here, there probably is, if not uh, firewood out back, there's probably an axe that you can go and uh, try and gain, you know, it, uh, it, his... Uh, uh, Garrick's supplies are likely uh, exhausted, but there's that... Wagon out front, you could chop that sucker up and, and toss him in. You got plenty of access to fire or to firewood, yeah. I should say. Look over at Adelisa, see she's comfortable, and I'll go get some firewood. Okay. Uh, so it will do a little bit. Why don't you give us one more toughness check, Farragus? And this will be routine. We'll give plus 10 on this one. It's critical fail. Awesome. So you cannot re-roll critical fails, and uh, because it's a critical, 
Would you give us a 3d10 plus 6 roll, please? 26! Yep. How does that compare to your peril threshold? Let's see. Uh, it exceeds my highest value. Okay. So that is uh, four, four more down. So you almost pass out from the effort of this. I think there, there may be a point where you do sort of uh, wobble and collapse. Maybe you didn't realize just how exhausted and how... Uh, don't put yourself... Not to inca incapacitated, but the one above that under okay. your peril threshold, please. Um, cause holy hell, like that was, uh, a lot more exhausting. I, I, imag I imagine that he's using the ax and it's rusted to the point. He doesn't know he, he hits a hard piece of wood, not his head just explodes. And so he has to use his freaking uh, uh, knives to pry open wood just to yeah. break it open. And you're wet the whole time. And, and like, all you're thinking is like, this shit's going to smoke like crazy. It's going to take forever <laughs> to get this wood. It's fr relatively fresh wood too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adelaza, what are you doing while uh, Farrakis is, is getting that stuff ready? You're in this darkened inn. You got no. You know, the light is getting uh, dimmer as the uh, sun is getting ready to set. Um, yeah, I'm ever hopeful. I'm going to be searching around behind the bar in any sort of back room, just seeing if there's any sort of alcohol or any sort of scraps of old food that might have been preserved in some way or just any sort of mm -hmm. food or drink that we could maybe consume to cheer us up a little bit yeah why don't you give us an let's see here we're gonna need an entire bottle of good whiskey why don't you give us a i think either skullduggery or awareness whichever one you want to use and both of those will set at routine plus 10. <laughs> No ten. Okay, you want to fortune point that? I hate us so much. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty desperate searching. Okay. So I'm gonna. Uh, and remember, it's routine. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that again. Okay, oh, no joy. There is something odd though. As you're looking around and things, you get up to the. Uh, uh, to behind the bar, and you're looking at some of the broken and empty bottles that are up there. And what you find is um, there is a bolt lodged in the wall. And the reason it stands out is because it looks fairly fresh. Like, there's no dust on it whatsoever. Uh, and it's sunk pretty deep into the wood. The wood is probably, uh, you know, several seasons worth of not treated. This thing goes in pretty deep, so you you missed it at a casual glance. And you look back to the main room and look back at this, and like, it probably was fired from somewhere near where the hearth is. And it takes you, if you want to try and pull it out, it'll, it'll be a facile thing. Mm. You pull this thing out, and yeah, it's a, this is a, it's a crossbow, like, not a hunting uh, bolt, this is a weapon. The hell's this doing in here? And is there any signs of any, any more of this sort of thing? Uh, not in behind the bar, but if you look over, if you head on over to where sort of, you know, you judge where the, sh the shot may have come from, um, it's tough to tell in the darkness. Uh, there might be stains on the floor here. You'll need mm -hmm. some light to be able to see that. Um... I'm assuming you've searched top to bottom and it's around when you've come, you know, when you're looking at that stuff where the door sort of, you hear it clatter open and Farrakis comes in looking like he's about to collapse. Yeah, he's got water dripping off of his nose and he's like got a poorly stacked uh, group of firewood in his arms and he's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. with some effort, um, you guys are able to get this fire going and you now will have a place at least to sleep from and uh, who would you think it is who's getting the fire started and who's uh, sitting back yeah I, I shall uh, take the wood off him and sort of push him into the the, the cushiest looking chair by the fire and say yeah, I think you better take a, yeah. take a rest <laughs> wood is all like off blocky with little twigs of uh, wood sticking off it looks like it's been hacked with a knife because it yeah. was <laughs> it's really <laughs> ugly uh, like there's two pieces that look like he just decided to kick it down, so they're still sort of attached by the, you know, by the, the husk. 
Um, as soon as he's sitting down, he's fingering a new notch in his knife that the wood put in there. And he's glowering. Uh, uh, that is. Oh, that actually leads me to another thing. So one of the one of the neat things is the game has a mechanic for um, uh, gear deterioration, mm -hmm. uh, where you if you roll a critical fail on an attack, your weapon goes down one by one. If you get hit with a critical attack, your armor get, goes down by one. And then during a rekindling, you can make a craft roll to try and uh, maintain that stuff too, to prevent it from further degrading. It's cool. Yeah, so it gives you stuff to do during a rekindling. So um, that is most definitely one thing you're going to want to do because your dagger uh, is currently worn. So it'll be minus one to damage, minus ten to hit. But you can, Jeez. during a rekindling, make... Um, a routine crafting check. Uh, now, do you have any training in craft? Let's see. Crafting is under... Crafting, I think, is under intelligence? Hold on. Maybe I'm, I may think of... A, one sec. It's not crafting. It is... Yeah, it's not called crafting. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, trade craft. Under willpower. Mm. Willpower. I do not. Okay, so what that means, uh, that is a special skill, which means it is flipped to fail. So when you roll, we flip it to whichever is worse of the two. It is a routine test. It'll be plus 10. So with our luck so far, this should be a, uh, a pass. Nope. Okay, so you're... <laughs> going to roll low and you're Yeah, perfect. and like, oh, god dang. You could spend a fortune point if you'd like. Uh, I think I'll need this, so yes. Okay. Let's try it again. Come on. You said routine. Yeah. 36? No, you flip to fail. You take the worst of the two. You don't automatically flip. If it's a flip to success, you flip it to the most beneficial of the oh. two. Flip to fail is you take the worst of the two. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, like, man, like, you need someone who actually trains in this stuff. You're more good at, at applying these things. Well, he sighs and puts his dagger away in. Shiv, it's a I'll not even a shivs. dagger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, your throwing dagger is what you used, right? Yeah, because okay. it was made of metal. I mean, a shiv would do crap to wood, right? No, a shiv is, is also made of metal. It's not like a prison shank. A shiv is just a, a very thin dagger. Yeah, but I imagine you sticks in wood, it'll break. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. The, the throwing dagger is probably a little bit more robust. Okay. So, so you uh, you can see Farrakis, you know, uh, has idly playing at this uh, uh, dagger his as you're getting this thing started. Fair, because as the fire starts going up, you sort of, uh, you know, drop the um, uh, the dagger, realizing it, you, it's kind of a fruitless task. But what you can see from the flickering flames that are now coming, it is illuminating the area immediately in front of him. And you have seen them enough to recognize the sign of spattered blood. As it appears that Adelaza is kneeling down and making a fire in the midst of where a butchery occurred. The floors are all stained with dried blood. But not, not so old as to have lost its very obvious and very clear color. You're thinking a day or two old. Adelaza, you're focused on kind of making the fire while this is happening. Farrakis, what do you say or do, if anything? Yeah, he leans down, you know, just runs his hand over just to test the wetness. He's like, I sincerely hope this was not the owner um, and okay. whoever got it deserved it. Why don't you give us a um, awareness check? See if you can get a sense of... And this will be, um, I think this will be routine as well. Routine. Oh my god. <laughs> the dice hate us. <laughs> the dice are challenging for you, so you can't tell. Apart from that that uh, broader period, um, you can also see that there are boot prints around in here, and this is obviously a place where like, a fight took place. And you realize that the scattering of um, uh, the remaining uh, chairs and whatnot that you saw, this perhaps was a recent thing. Mm. In that case... He'll look over to the door and look around for any other, like, easy points of entry and see if he can put up, like, a barricade or close the door so they can't be easily surprised. Okay. 
Um, his paranoia is starting to ratchet up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think you'll be able to find some stuff. Like, it's not going to be... They're, they're unfortunately, most of the... Uh, I guess first, Adelaide, you see Farrakis get up and he starts moving stuff around. Do you say anything, Farrakis? Or Adelaide, mm -hmm. as you see... Um, getting a bit twitchy there, Farrakis. I have not had a good experience thus far in this worn-down piss hole. And there's blood on the floor. And the worst part mm -hmm. is, the old. you know they're, they're, like, you know you used to know the name of this place, and there was a sign on here, but the sign's gone and you can't remember it. You remember Garrick, yeah. you remember his family, you can't remember the name of this place, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. yeah, it seems like there's been action recently. I found a bolt in the wall behind the bar. He glances that direction and shakes his head and tries to hurry up. <laughs> is there yeah, a table I can grab? Yeah, I'll give you a hand with a table if there is what remains of a table. Yeah, very little here. Perhaps if you check downstairs uh, or upstairs. Hmm, see if there's any beds or anything upstairs. Upstairs there is, yeah. If you're looking there, there's going to be a frame you can easily move down and make use of that. Yeah, we'll prop that up against the door then and try and jam it. Can He's not looking forward to going up those stairs with as tired as he is, but... Yeah, You'd rather be tired than dead. <laughs> so, um, what uh, with that secured, you've done your best for like the front, the back. It is an inn, so there are a lot of different points of egress. Uh, but I think you guys can do your best. At the very least, you feel confident that you will get warning if anyone comes in from any of the different directions. Um, uh, what I was looking for is there is uh, we are going to be doing your rekindling. Uh, for the uh, evening. Uh, that means, uh, first off, that there will be an opportunity to recuperate. So, because you guys are, uh, or the, the amount that you guys are able to recover uh, depends on the circumstances you find yourself in. So, if you're in a safe place, um, it's warm, it's safe, uh, like next to a campfire or a sigil of sanctuary or on the floor of a caravansary uh, where there was no uh, or little danger uh, and you get six hours of sleep, you clear your peril condition track. When you are sleeping in an unsafe place, like a recent scene of an ambush where the people you know or at least knew another life may have been dead, uh, or a filthy oubliette, or a wet storm drain, or a back alley, uh, you only recover one level of your peril condition track. There is other ways, just like in um, Flames of Freedom, you have a, something called a Salmiac. You can use Salmiac, allows you to recover automatically one. You can also spend a fortune point to raise by one. And there's something called revelry and reflection you can do. Revelry is by is to actively try and lift the spirits of your fellow blackbirds to ameliorate their distress. And to do revelry, normally what you do is uh, you spend an hour, you make a charm test, and on a success, the revelers raise one level. On a critical success, they raise two. On a sublime success, they raise three. Farrakis, I happen to notice you've got a talent. Yes. It's a finesse. Yeah, what does that do? Let's me use Skullduggery in place of Intimidator Charm Checks. Well, so you could use Skullduggery in place as Revelry and try and raise each of your peril conditions. Yeah, he's going to try to say, I remember this inn back in its heyday and when there are drinks flowing and uh, he's going to tell some good stories of travelers uh, he met and heard and maybe even recount a bard's tale that he heard once and, you know, horribly skullduggered it up, but okay. see if that'll help. Yeah, yeah. And, so you know, the one laughing. should give us uh, a skullduggery check at routine, plus 10. We'll give you a, because it's some good use of your backstory there. <laughs> you want to fortune point that? Yes. This, okay, the dice ahead. have to turn around sometimes. Exactly. I you mean, do a critical success at some point here. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> so, God. Fortunately, you didn't get a critical fail, so it's not any worse than what it was before. It's like his mood is just this something's up. Yeah. This is. So, um, it is. Uh, so unfortunately, you're you're not really able to uh, to see much improvement. 
uh, in so. your condition. Uh, with a nice sleep, though, you will be able to to see some improvement. Um, <laughs> other than that, now I don't think either of you have Salmiac uh, on you. Uh, you could, uh, yeah. if you want, Fair, because you're the one who's suffering from the most injuries. You could spend a fortune point to try and improve your peril condition, or you just want to see if anything happens throughout the night. Uh, spend a point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So raise your. Uh, so mechanically, to help you decide on this, um, your current level, you are ignoring three skill ranks. By spending mm -hmm. one, you'd ignore two skill ranks. That doesn't make a difference for you. You're tier one, which means you have a maximum of one skill rank. So until you clear okay. out everything, yeah, it doesn't really so, do much. It means you're closer to being incapacitated if you're attacked, if you experience anything that causes peril as opposed to damage. But uh, yeah. We'll just let the knight get me one step closer, I suppose. Okay, so then, uh, why don't you each give us a an awareness check, please? I want to see some green here, finally. Come on, guys. Standard DC? There you go. Standard, please, yeah. No. Okay, well, wait, which makes sense. You're just ugh, dead to the world. Um, Adelaisa, you are the one who... You're taking your watch... Uh, Farragus is slumped to the side in his chair. Uh, he's snoring away. Tell me what's in on your mind. Where is your mind going as you're sitting in here too? And how, what does it look like as you're keeping a watch? Are you just sit sitting and listening? Are you like walking to those broken windows, looking outside at the falling rain? Yeah, I mean, the rain has really got her down, but so sh she's in the best mood she's been in for a few days, just getting out of the rain. So she's definitely trying to see the positive side of it. Um, looking over at Verica snoring away, sort of contently. And uh, just every so often we'll wander over just to listen, to, you know, hearing some sort of wolf in the back in the distance or something, just to glance out of the window. Yep. Uh, the wolves have, have fed quick... well over these low these last 12 years. Yeah. And uh, give the barricade a quick look over just okay. to make sure that we've we've done our job properly and then be looking to, again, slump down in a chair and take the weight off her feet. Okay. So you've uh, just completed your round, your feet creaking across the wood, the smell of mildew and uh, and wet, uh, heavy in the air, um, mixed with this, the scent of that fire. You maybe toss another of uh, those pathetic logs that uh, Farrak has chopped up onto the fire. Ugh. Slump back down. And as you do, you think you hear something from downstairs. There's a clattering. Something got knocked over. It's definitely inside, um, and it feels like it's beneath your feet. Just like a basement. Yeah, a cellar. Yeah. yeah. And did I see a trap door or something when I was behind the bar? Uh, there would probably... Uh, there would probably be a set of stairs leading down to it, as opposed to it. There's probably okay. a trapdoor down there as well. And in fact, it's a, if it's a, uh, got a pub in it as well, it probably has that. So behind the bar, there's probably a trapdoor to get yourself easy access down there. Elsewhere in the building, there probably is a set of stairs leading down. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to head over to where that trapdoor is and sort of get my head closer to it. To Are you making any effort to try and be quiet? Um, or are you striding over? Depends how uh, noisy Farragus is, I guess. Uh, uh, Farragus is, is dead to the world sleeping. He's not like snoring or anything. <laughs> no. He's okay. completely asleep. Well, I'll try and, yeah, I'll try and be uh, quiet. Okay. So if there is anything going on. So let's. Uh, Darren, that's an excellent uh, opportunity to talk about contested roles in this game. So why don't you give us a stealth check, please? Okay. Okay. You want to fortune point that, or are you? Um. You're no, not a not that, terribly no. a sneaky lass here, anyway. No. Okay. So let me check my awareness here. And here we go. Making use of my servant of the gods dice for the first time. Hmm. I've been a misfortune to re-roll that. That was not great. Okay. 
go. And to give you guys some more fortune points. Oh! <laughs> So as you're making your way across, you're not being particularly stealthy, but you hear a clattering as if something was someone was maybe banging into it. You remember seeing when you were looking for booze, there were some empty crates down there. Someone's already... And it sounds like someone has tripped over them, and you hear kind of a... <laughs> from down there. As, as you make your way over to the bar, you hear that. What do you do? Um... First thing I'll be doing, is there anything heavy that I can put on top of this trapdoor as a um, sort of urgency to... Give us an awareness check. Let's see if there's anything. Or if everything's been well, broken. That's, that's what's going on. Yeah. Yep. There's a, like a leftover keg uh, that's uh, got, you know, maybe rainwater or something pulled in. You could drag that over. Yeah, I'm going to drag that over before... And if it comes up through this trapdoor, okay, I'm so not you, ready for And you can hear... <laughs> from somewhere underneath there. And then you hear a... Foo, 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 foo. Something's hitting the trapdoor. Okay, um, at this point, uh, reluctantly, I'm going to go and wake up Fericus. Okay, so Fericus... Um, you are awakened, and you think you can hear the sound of beating wings. Uh, then you sort of look around, and uh, Adelaide has a look on her face that tells you that there may be trouble. Yeah. I'll give it the L. Finger he on the lips. He groans as he stands up and pulls out one of his shivs. Okay. <laughs> so let's do this, guys. Let's... Yeah, each of you click on your token, and then here's one of the ways where Blackbirds differs from the other things. I actually don't roll initiative. Every adversary has a fixed initiative score. You guys roll initiative each round. Initiative remember it's on their combat, uh, about halfway down on the right-hand side, uh, underneath your peril condition. Oop. Oh, you know, I forgot to clear this thing last time. That's why. Get rid of these and get rid of that. Okay. Allow me to quickly on the Fate Weaver's level here. Load something up. Where's that Fang Dragon? In my imagination. <laughs> Where the nightmare I was just woken up from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Wings, wings, what? Oh. <laughs> All right, and let me add that and. You know, as, as much as the, the die rolls suck, it's helped me get into Farrakhan's mindset about this has been a horrible last couple days. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun. Because your characters have got, like, pretty good stats and whatnot, too, like, it, it allows you to play the kind of beaten down hero but not be mechanically penalized as much as you might be in other systems. Uh, like, it's something I really like about the, the whole, the Zweihander approach to the peril stuff of it, taking away skill levels as opposed to imposing penalties is Great. It's a, it's a, avoids the death spiral. Gives you a consequence, but it avoids the death spiral thing that you see in in uh, some other games. Um, so, Farakus, we're going to start with you. Uh, you are you're up. You told me you drew a weapon. You have three action points, and I believe I've loaded uh, combat actions in here for you. You'll notice they're gotcha. slightly different in uh, this than they are in uh, Flames of Freedom. Uh, and uh, you guys have your... Uh, remember, you've got plus 10 to your stealth because your Prowler is slotted. Right now. So, Farragus, three actions. What would you like to do? Gotcha. Let me... I think since whatever it is is down below and has to break through the trap door, that I want to find a nice... Well, there is. To... there are the stairs. Is it coming from up? Oh, it seems to be trying to batter at the... Uh, there is, like, an easy access trap door where the, the bar is. That, so you can get down and get, you know, feed up stuff or, or load stuff down. But there's also access to the cellar uh, by the kitchen. Gotcha. I think I'll move over to the stair opening um, and try to hide around the corner just to get a chance to, like, sure. jab something as it comes around the edge. Okay. Uh, so I think then uh, that'll be a maneuver to, to get over there, right? And then... So, a okay. move action. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes. Oh, wait. Moving action is a maneuver. 
Oh, a hustle, hustle. Now, a maneuver is actually, maneuver is the withdraw action in this game. Gotcha. Okay, okay. so hustle over there and then try to take a, try to hide or. Yeah, yeah, give us a. That is an option. Make use of that plus 10 to my stealth. Absolutely. And then you could save one AP. Remember, in this game, you you have to bank AP. And if you choose mm -hmm. to get extra AP, you're going to want to, um, um, uh, you're going to want to uh, spend your, uh, what do you call it? Um, I spent fortune points beforehand to bank them. So gotcha. go ahead and give us a stealth check at plus 10, please. Uh, let's make it okay. plus 20 because the ambient conditions are also really beneficial. So easy. Okay. Nice. All right. So now we take a look at your degree of success. What is your AB, your agility bonus? Uh, seven. Okay, and then the degree of success on that is what your what you needed versus what you rolled. So the tens digit seven minus four is a three. If you have an A B of seven, that means your total success is a ten. Okay. So what I would need is to beat that ten in order to um, to beat it. I'm just getting, sorry. I'm just getting my uh, okay my cloth markers to. Uh, Mark off the different, uh, or cloth bookmarks. Get shit marked in here. There's combat. There's my adversary. Okay. Now, uh, that was you. Next up is Adelaza. What are you doing? Um, yeah. Having the same thought that we need to protect anything coming up from the stairs. I'm going to uh, hustle into the, the kitchen area. Okay. Um... I don't know how much movement. Uh, that's probably left. one hustle to like one action, one AP to get over there. Yeah. And then, did you uh, want to hide as well, or are you? I want to. I want to get close to the stairs, um, but not hide. But you know, back against the wall, so they would hopefully come up the stairs before they'd notice me. But I want to. I want them to see me before they see Vericus. Easily. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Take, taking cover. Um, taking well, cover. I'm gonna I was going to do the uh, Barivia's Guard, is it? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. To give yourself so unlimited. if something comes up, I can okay. defend myself. Yeah, and you still got one AP left over as well then. All right. I didn't know how much movement I needed. Um, you could bank that uh, as well if you want that other one. Yeah, I'll save that one. Okay. Yep. All right. So then... Uh, you hear uh, the battering. Let me make a awareness check for this. See if it hears you up here. Okay. Um, so it does. You hear it from downstairs. And then there is a sprinting and the sound of something uh, sprinting. And what you see is what clatters into clumsily into the side of the stairwell and then begins making its way up towards you, Adelaza. Is some horrific stumbling dead creature. Oh. Uh, there are obvious signs where this thing has been, this corpse has been injured. Undead in this as well are um, particularly, they, they're they known, uh, Farrakis, you would know this, as the children of Anhelios, uh, because Anhelios is, uh, I can't remember if Anhelios is the elf queen or the child of the elf queen, but it's said that one of the demigod progenitors of the empire, a guy named Hyperios or Hyperion, Hyperion, um, he killed uh, Anhelios, the elf queen, who was pregnant with his child, and when that child fell to the ground, it cursed the land. Undead are quite literally a plague in this, in addition to being risen by you know necromancers and sorcerers and such. Uh, so this thing is, you would know how uh, dangerous uh, these things can be. Um, I'm just seeing, I don't think there is any Yeah, no fear check. So here's another cool thing uh, about the game. Every adversary 
has misfortune spends. I have special powers I can use with the adversaries. Uh, we, the last time we played, uh, we actually played, um, wolves, for instance, have a either four or five misfortune spend to howl and summon more wolves. <laughs> yeah. So that is something that makes awesome. Oh, you often can spend your fate point to try and avoid that stuff and uh, thwart it, but just uh, that is something that makes fighting each yeah. adversary just a little bit different and a little more yeah, dangerous. I'm, I'm flinching and dormant with the tool <laughs> thing. Yeah. So this thing has uh, stumbled up the stairs. It's within uh, engagement, but it does not have enough movement to actually engage you, Adelaisa. Did not seem to be aware of you. Uh, that was, oh, sorry, that was its turn. Faricus, you're up now. Okay, this I want to, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, this thing, uh, I think it hasn't, you sort of pictured yourself being like able to, as soon as something's on the main floor, to attack it, right? Yes. Okay, so it's not really a readying in action in this game, um, and it, it doesn't trigger, but this thing is completely unaware of you, and it is engaged, so you can make Perfect. your decisions based on that. I would like to use 2 AP and use my Never Saw It Coming surprise action. Okay, uh, once you click on that, the little speech bubble will put it in uh, chat. Okay. The top bubble. right, I think, is where the bubble is. Oh. There we go. Uh, never Saw It Coming. Uh, okay. Uh, with successful stealth test, you're able to subdue the enemy without causing damage, rendering them helpless. Ooh, okay. Uh, whew. That might not work against undead. Okay. I don't think Fericus knows that. No, and let's take a look at the try. helpless condition, actually. Let me take a look here. Um, uh, cannot use any actions or reactions and may be slain with a successful attack. So that's just, it's not, that actually would affect them. Okay, cool. Yeah. So and go ahead and give us a stealth check. And I think my stealth gets a plus 10 from Prowler. Yeah, because you're still in Prowler, absolutely. Okay, and so what's the difficulty rating? Uh, just a standard. So bump it up to routine since I get that plus 10? Yes. Okay. Come on, dice. Ew. You want I'd a like fortune point then? A fortune point, yes. You got it. Um, now I've lost the stealth. There it is. Okay. Come on. Oh! <laughs> So he, uh, he, what he does is he tries to grab his other shiv, run forward and like stab it in both of its eyes so it can't see him. But the guy goes wide and hits him in its cheeks instead. Well, helpless is knocking them off. down, right? Like you're trying, especially trying to get them in a place where you can just take them out right away. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually attack them. Uh, and also you try to back in uh, drawing a weapon, which is an action. So you can't do that as part of I'm saying that's why he failed. Yeah. Okay, so you still have, that was two AP. You still have one more. What would you like to do? Um, you can still attack normally if you like. I think uh, a takedown because that might that might work. Okay. So one AP. One AP for a takedown. Okay. Uh, so uh, go ahead and uh, that is a coordination test. Coordination. Okay. Standard, standard. DC. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a fortune point or no? Mm, yeah, that is. Adelaide is going next, so she might be able to use it to her okay. advantage. So you uh, get in and try and get this thing, and the stink once you get in, I think, is the thing that really throws you off. You were not yeah. expecting how horrific yeah. this is. And oh, no, I, I did I did want to use the point to try again. Okay. Yeah. Sorry if I didn't say that clearly. Come on, back of the knee. Yes! Okay. Well, it does get to resist, though. This is not One. a defense thing. This is an automatic resist. So, my first success. <laughs> take down. Um, this is, uh, uh, they resist with coordination. Uh, so, the coordination is, uh, let's see here, uh, 45. Okay, so I'll roll that in chat. Let's see here. No! <laughs> so it knocks prone. You've managed to knock this thing down at least. Then, oh, that's my whole, whole turn. <laughs> Adelaza. So, you know, has no defenses right now unless he's spending uh, fortune points to gain defenses. To gain AP. No? <laughs> that's a lot of misfortune. Adelaza, what are you doing? You got three AP. How much is it to get back up? Uh, two. Two, two oh, AP is Okay, step. so he's, he's quite... He's in quite bad position. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to... 
try and attack it. Yeah. Uh, is there is there any bonus while he's down? Uh, while he's prone, uh, let's see prone. Can't see any attack action. Uh, you deal one d six extra damage. Ah. Okay. On a hit. Um. I'm wondering if I should. No, it's going to take up all my actions. Oh, a target attacks two a two AP, isn't it? Yes, it is. And what the, the advantage there is, you make the target. Uh, if you hit the arm, it's disarmed. The body, it's wounded. Head disoriented. Leg is prone, and it also does one d six plus your CB extra damage. I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm going to try a targeted attack to make it prone, so it take its whole. Oh, it's already prone. Sort of get up. Uh, oh yeah. That's uh, what Farrakis did. Oh yes, yeah, not the. What's the one where it slows it down, makes it hard for it to move? Uh, uh, wounded is plus one AP for movement actions. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm going for. So it'll be three AP for it to stand up then. Yeah, Okay. basically. I want it to waste its whole turn trying to get back up if yeah. successful. So okay. go ahead uh, and give us a, an attack. You can go into the combat tab and I'll take it yeah. using your longsword. Yeah, do I get plus ten because it's... Um, I can use dual, can't I? My talent for a single target. Uh, against a single target, uh, I think. Uh, can you click on dual? What does it? What does it say? Uh, I can't remember if you need to be the only one fighting it, or if it's you're fighting. Oh, only is that one. what it is? No, only a single enemy doesn't count your ally. So yeah, absolutely. So you get plus okay. ten to your combat. Yeah, good use of yeah. your talent. Ah. Oh. Do you oh, wish to? Yeah. I've got to go with that again. You better hope we kill it. So. It doesn't get too easy. Yeah, just can't keep missing. <laughs> oh dear. This ah. game hates us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So that is uh, your first was... attack. Is let's see here. Plus ten. So that costs two AP. That. Combat. Is your combat thirty nine? Um. So look. Mm. It's right. It's melee, is it? Uh, just your combat score. 30, no, it's 39. Oh, 39, yeah. Why is your combat so low? Yeah, that is what it says. That's, uh, that's like your worst stat. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> weird. I don't know why that is. I don't even have a score that low. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to do one thing here. I'm just going to swap that with your... Because that should be higher. Uh, 49, and we'll swap that with your willpower. That'll be 39. There we go. I don't know why that was okay. set up that way. Okay. All right. So then uh, with the extra 10, uh, that would be 69. So that, actually, the second one is a hit. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, uh, that does 12. Give us a 1d6 roll. Exclam 1d6 exclamation mark. Oh, you know what? Hold on. No, that's already included. You actually accidentally rolled two fury dice as it is. Um, oh, what is your combat bonus, your CB? Uh, five, I think. Uh, six. Six. Now give us one D, uh, so uh, roll one D six exclamation mark plus six. This will be the extra damage from the. Uh, what do you call it? From the. Um, so one D six exclamation plus six. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, the one D six included in your long sword damage that'll be for it being prone. That's twenty five damage. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, so this thing is almost completely uh, annihilated with one single strike. At least my flailings helped a bit. <laughs> uh, oh, it did. The extra D6 damage from pro being prone. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it's wounded as well, isn't it? So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it is on the cusp of being uh, destroyed as well. Uh, let's see here. So here's the thing. Normally what you would do is, uh, if this was a living target, uh, what you would be doing is rolling for injuries, right? Because you've, you've reduced this thing down yep. to critically injured. Uh, this is undead, though. So they do not suffer injuries or whatnot. So you hack this thing. This would be a lethal strike like nearly cutting the leg off you right through the femoral artery uh this thing does not seem to be dead or not seem to be affected by it uh that was one action no two or two two ap you still have one yeah, more what would you like to do with them 
Um, yeah, just going to be super cautious and go on guard again. So okay. uh, not knowing if it could get up from that. Would you give us a... Um, uh, Adelaide, a roll it, uh, one chaos dice, please. Okay. Then, uh, it is, uh, the ghoul's turn. Whew. So it'll cost now, uh, it is, let's see here, put the slowed on there. So it's wounded and it's prone, so it's going to cost three AP for it to get up. But... I guess it can use action points or uh, yep. points, can't it? Um, oh, boy. Uh, any of them. So I... <laughs> I'm using four misfortune. Okay. That sounds good. For... Uh, to spend one AP. No, hold on. That was four. Uh, I was at five. I should be on one. You guys are back up to five. What this thing does is it looks at your longsword and the whole chest sort of tremors and then it spews out this hork of viscous greenish red uh, like uh, liquid or mold. Now, Adelaide, you can spend a fate point to avoid this if you like, but this will destroy your longsword. <clears throat> yeah, I've got anything else? You might have a dagger. Mm. I've got a shiv, yeah. Yeah, I, I spend the fate point. We're going to need your longsword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't like that. Okay, so what does it look like as you narrowly avoid getting this thing on you? Um, so I spend my, my fake point. So just a shock comes across the face uh, as this thing sort of vomits up almost. Yeah. Um, and it'll be just the combat training, the dueling, the fencing. It'll be just some instinct will just kick in and just that last second sidestep and then this stuff just fizzing as it hits some wood on the floor and it's just ugh. yeah and it it uh, well it hits the ground but it actually uh what you see is it's only uh you didn't notice it before it was hidden in the uh in the mist or, or like perhaps someone trod on it there's a single like copper penny that's in there and that copper penny just sizzles and gets eaten as if this was an angry uh acid that devolves the 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 wood and the other stuff is not affected but the metal the metal is completely dissolved. Uh, Adelaide, would you give us a folklore check? This is standard. See if you can remember something you've heard. No, no. you don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, you guys may have noticed that you now have six fortune points because I'm buying one extra AP so I can stand up. This thing is no longer... As soon as you react to that, it's... Like almost like a wild animal skitters around. You hear more cracking as its leg is giving way, but it still hops up. Yeah, and is ready to attack. Fericus, three AP back. What are you doing? Um, seeing that his eyes are wide and he's wishing he had some wooden shivs right now, um, but he's going to do a target attack against that Fericus, leg. Fericus, one for free. Why don't you give us a folklore check? Okay. Folklore. Let's see. Still not used to these uh, sheet yet. Intelligence, folklore. Yep, come on. Ho, 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 ho. Huge! That is a, what's your intelligence bonus, IB? It is a three. That's seven in total. Two things here. The children of Anhelios, you remember like, oh! Children of Anhelios are afflicted with a kind of verdigris. Uh, I don't know if I'm spelling that word, pro or saying that word correctly. Uh, that consumes metal particularly those of, uh, of enchanted things. So this thing will eat through it. The other thing you remember, uh, they are dry as an old bag of leaves. Fire. There is a function in this. So normally D10s do not explode in this game. Uh, so when you're rolling peril or whatnot, you never roll any things. The one exception to that is when something is 
a bane to something else. If you have a weapon that is a bane to an enemy or whatnot, or fire that is a bane, instead of rolling d6s for damage, you roll d10s and they explode. Fire is a bane to the children of Angelios. So that's okay. for free. Uh, you have three actions, Farrakis. What are you doing? I'm going to do a targeted attack and go for the leg to see if I can knock it down again. Okay. Um, so, combat. And you're using your... Uh, you have to use a weapon for that. Yeah, my ship. I'm going to try okay. and... I imagine he's got like a little bit of muscle left with the bone. He's going to try and hit the bone and twist it to crack it. Do you want... What you can do, uh, it's one AP to move into a flanking position. Okay. If you want to gain plus 10. That sounds good. Okay. So we'll use three actions and a targeted attack. Uh, it sounds good. Okay, so you get yourself in the way, <clears throat> make a target attack, and you still spend uh, f uh, fortune points to uh, get extra APs if you need them. Uh, I will probably do that, yes. Okay, so go ahead. You'll have plus 10 to your attack here. Okay, routine difficulty then? Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, routine difficulty, yeah. <sighs> no fortune point AP to Yeah, I do. Okay. This is getting ridiculous with the low rolls. <laughs> oh, no! That is a sublime failure. Yes. Holy smokes. Okay, hold on. I actually don't know what the sublime failure does for attacks. Let's take a look here. You might break your weapon. That would go par and par with everything so far. Okay, let's see here. Um, you got too close to the goo, man. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Uh, base chance, peril, we'll strike. Um, it's so your wet, your shiv now has two levels of degradation on it. Ugh. So your shiv is now minus. Uh, I think it's minus twenty to hit with it, and minus two yes. damage. That's only the one you used. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I uh, just spend a fortune point to get another action and bank that to defend myself. Okay. Yeah, because this you try and, and I'm going to say uh, it, uh, it's good fire. fire actually, we, you also have to give us a 1d6 uh, roll or give us a chaos dice roll. Chaos dice. This is I don't know why the dice hate us so much. <laughs> uh, chaos. Boom. Okay. So no. Because I was saying, if, if the verdigris was also triggered, it, <laughs> well, it falls apart. It has goo in your hand. Okay, uh, so then it is... Oh, hold on, it should be five, not six. All right. Oh, no, you re-rolled, and then it should be four. Yeah. It should be two, okay. Come on, Madison, here we go. All right, Adelaza. This thing is up, and before you, it is very badly injured, though. One solid hit, and this thing's going to go down. Uh, yeah. It looks like Farrakis has ruined his ship. <laughs> or, um, yeah. Yeah, really? no, I think uh, a good attack will uh, take it down, hopefully. Okay. Dagger, um, another shiv. So what I'm actually going to do is, I don't know if I have to even declare it, the uh, Mr. Mr. Lev's open, is it? It means you can attack multiple times without having um, penalty. Yes, Mr. Lev's open. Uh, that's a zero AP thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, you so, just declare it, so you've got just, that. So I just take an attack basically and then I can take another one without any penalties exactly and yep. she's flanking with me now right uh no I'm just, I'm just reading the ability um, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask does that apply once someone's done that or was that a every turn type uh, no, the yeah you have to uh, spend it it looks like every so it's maneuvering oh, every, every but, but Okay, so what it is, is once you get flanked, then once you get yourself in a flanking position, you do not need to do it again. So currently, right. Farrakis is flanking it. And I'll be in front of it, sort of thing. Hold on, let me read this out. Okay, a single foe is already engaged with another combatant. The Blackbird attacks from the side or behind, making it harder to defend against the combined assault. Engaged uh, attacks by those so engaged are made at plus 10 until the foe is uh, no longer flying. So because Farrakis set you up, you get the benefit of it. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay, yeah. so you got plus 10 from that, and you got plus 10 from duel. So I'll be a plus yeah. 20 to your first nice. attack. Whoa, yes. solid hit. I don't have enough action points to... Yeah, that's it. Uh, so this, what does it look like as you take this ghoul down? 
Um, yeah, so just slicing into it, uh, it's, it's sort of falling apart, and, and then just all this sort of like acid blood or, or whatever goo yeah. that's inside, it's just spilling out, and any sort of little bits of metal that just happens to be about just yeah. sizzling away nails and stuff. Um, imagine in uh, Faircus's failure so far, he's, 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 he's basically stuck his shiv in its leg and it's in the bone, and he's trying to pull it out, and it's distracting it enough, and, and then she goes, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I need uh, Adelaide. Would you give us a chaos dice roll, please? Also, I forgot we got to roll initiative each round in this one. Oh. Yeah. Nice game. Um, yeah, I don't. I shouldn't say that. I don't roll initiative. You guys roll initiative each round. Um, hmm. So, with that, this thing drops down onto its back, and what you can see is that, uh, or it drops down, I guess, in front of you. What you can see is that sticking out of its back is a broken bolt. Mm. Erkus is going to say uh, drag it outside I'm going to get some fire we're burning it <laughs> uh, it is still raining outside what's well, just one of the don't burn the in down so, uh, so he throw it on the stoop and burn it. Farrakis says that he's going to do that, and this sort of wobbles. Remember, your peril condition is like <laughs> one off from passing out once again. I know. <laughs> so, he's still trying to pull his shiv out of the bone. Yeah, I think mean, he says that, and then you you see from his like the break in his voice and the wobbling that like Farrakis, I don't think really means that necessarily. Yeah, I think I'll just chuck bits of it onto the fire. Just see if it grows, if it, if it burns. Okay, uh, it um, does. Yeah, it goes up like uh, if you even if you brought a brand over and set it to this thing, it would catch up like fly paper or like yeah. a flash paper. And I'll also um, sh swap over my shiv and say, I think I think you might need this and sort of swap it over with the one that Fericus has got. <laughs> oh, okay, in a I've still got one good one, but I, I do like having two. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what you can do, yeah, uh, uh, the reason uh, fighting with two is good is because the offhand quality gives you plus one to damage when you're fighting with both. Um, with, uh, as well, Adelaide said, what you could do is, while you're keeping watch, because I don't think you've done any uh, rekindling actions, uh, is you can actually try and use Tradecraft to repair uh, that hmm. uh, that de uh, deteriorated oh, yeah. thing. Let's yeah, give it, uh, yeah. So this will be flip to fail. I don't think, you, are you trained in Tradecraft? No. Go ahead and give us a no. flip to fail Tradecraft check, please. Oof. No. Uh, do you want no. to spend a fortune point re-roll or? No, 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 I'm going to stick with my... Okay, so you, you look at it, you try and work a whetstone across it once or twice and you're like, what is... I'll just, just put that to one side for now. All right, and you guys, uh, so you collapse down and uh, you uh, go off for sleep. So why don't we do this? First thing, uh, we're going to take our mid-session break a little late, but uh, in a, just a moment here. What you can do is because each of you have, um, uh, one other thing I'll let you do, Farrakis. Farrakis, why don't you give us an either awareness or skullduggery check? Your preference. Okay. Uh, it's better with Skullduggery just by a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and give us a, just a standard uh, Skullduggery check. Okay, you can Oop. spend a fortune point if you want. For what effect? I don't know. If it's You're it. looking around to see if there's anything useful. Uh, Adelaide has looked around, but you've got a more nefarious mind. Uh, sure, we'll we'll do that. Okay. Let's try one more time. Okay. Oh. This, guy's this place has been really picked over. Okay, so then... <laughs> Uh, with a nice rest, you can each raise your peril level by one. Your peril condition by one. And then, uh, yeah, let's take our quick med session break. Then we'll come back and uh, to see what you guys decide to do next. Uh, so for those listening at home, we'll be back momentarily.
Okay, so guys, with morning come, you are a little hungry. Um, do you wish to give us a survival check? See if you can't scrounge up some uh, grub for today. Let's see. Survival. Survival, I believe, is a common. Uh, yeah, it's a common skill, so if, even if you don't have ranks in it, you can still make a check. That no penalty. Okay. Do one of us have to do it or both? Uh, one, so what you can do is, uh, if you both are going to do it, uh, you'll improve, get, you'll basically get plus 10 uh, to someone else making that uh, check. And let me see if it's, this is a forest, so I think it might be easier here than uh, uh, in some other places. So let's take a look here. Erkus is really tired, and he might not be motivated to go back outside. I was going to say, I, I sort of, I thought that I'd probably go out sort of fairly early while he's still sort of recovering and seeing he's still not looking great. Sure. Or try and catch something. Uh, why don't you give us uh, Adelaide? Give us a three D. Uh, give us uh, actually three chaos dice, please. Three chaos dice. Your skills. Oh, okay. I have good news. The rain has stopped. Oof. No more looking for a leak in your house. <laughs> oh, you're looking forward to traveling through the mud. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, this will actually be an easy check. I already did a, a normal one. Oh, did so. you? Okay, yeah, so it'll be plus 20, so that's actually a... Uh, three plus whatever your perception bonus is. Yeah. Okay. Perception was five, yeah. So you head out and you're able to scrounge out some berries and, and uh, nuts and stuff like that. So you, you are able to get enough to, you know, get, uh, keep yourselves fed for the day. And as you're making your way back in um, Adelaide, so you pass by the uh, that front door once again and you can see you know, you know what your boot prints look like. You know what Farrakus's boot prints look like. And what you missed last night was that there are uh, tracks of about five heavy men that came in. It looks like only a day or so before you guys. They're still quite, uh, they're full of water right now, um, but they're not washed away or trod away. So um, if you're curious as to, um, you know, uh, where the source of those stains were, uh, there is definitely someone who left here uh, at some point uh, before you guys arrived. So you come in. Yeah. Uh, what do you say She'll to have... Farragut? As he's well, yeah, she finds Farragut. He's uh, he's working that bolt out of the wall and kind of looking at it to see if he notices anything. Oh, that, that's already he. Uh, Adelaide's already took the bolt out. Oh, she did. Okay, yep. so I, I guess he's looking at it to see if there's any markings on it that would like. Give us a clue to who they were. Uh, like, why don't you give us an awareness check at plus uh, 10, please. He's looking for, like, uh, military markings or sure. something. Sure. No. He's just really bad at stuff. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, you don't see anything that that calls out specifically. I mean, there's and to be honest, there's so many... Um, uh, there are so many... Um, like ironmongers or you know weapon blacksmiths that are selling to both sides anyway in Elkland that it'd be tough to pin, pin down one conclusively. What I can tell you is the bolt that's on this, uh, the fletching on it at the uh, at the end of the uh, shaft uh, is I, I like effectively identical to the one or to, sorry, it wasn't the fletching, it would be the bolt itself. The shaft seems identical to what was sticking out of that child of Anhelios that you fought. Well, I guess we found out what happened to some of them, at least. We didn't see any remains, did we? Uh, you haven't actually gone back downstairs since this thing came up from it. Food first, mm -hmm. then okay. downstairs. Yep. So you eat, yeah, you're able to... Uh, you're not suffering from any food or, or any hunger or whatnot. It's again not warm. It's not uh, necessarily you know oak cuisine, but it's filling. Yeah, Fer Ferica said uh, you know grudgingly um, thanks uh, Adelaide for uh, finding decent food. 
he's he's starting to show that he's annoyed with his inability to help. Oh, <laughs> also today, Fericus, um, the whispers are growing. Increase your tithe by one, please. No. The voices are not helping my mood. Okay. <laughs> so, then, what do you guys wish to do next? You can carry on the road uh, in the direction of Colvendine. Well, uh, he says, um, I used to know the guy that owned this place, but... Um, I like to see that this place was cleansed of any kind of uh, more of these things. Allow me to show one, just highlight one other thing here too. Mm. Remember, one of the ways that you can spend fortune is by tapping into the the aspects of the Norns. Erd's mm -hmm. voice speaks from the past because you've established that you've got this contact. I would not say no to you spending a fortune uh, point to tell us something that you know about this place that might be beneficial. Like for instance, if there's a place that Gareth used to hold, hide something or something similar to that. Yeah, that, that, that sounds good. We'll, we'll do that. And us, I think that he had a, um, a stash somewhere downstairs. It was hidden behind a, uh, an old barrel okay. that you know, he kept trinkets for the family or other things. Maybe we could find his relatives and return them. Okay. Or if it's foodstuffs, make use of them. What do you think it is? Well, it's probably not foodstuffs he's keeping there uh, in a things. But, I mean, if, if that's where there's some place on the property that he would hide his riches, um, I don't think that's un unreasonable. So, then, what? let's say, I think... You will find there's the trappings here. If there's any of those things down there, we want to make it safe for the next people who come by. Yeah. So what are you thinking of doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just uh, make a ramshackle torch and head downstairs and look for yeah. what we can find. Okay. I'll take the lead. Okay. So, uh, Adelaide, and do you have the reason, Adelaide, you have a shiv is because, again, like if you're wielding them two, one in each, like one another in the offhand, it gives you plus one damage. No, we use a makeshift sort of torch from the fire. Okay. To... okay. So, you're able to cobble something together. Uh, you head down into the basement, and um, there are two things you discover. For one, there, it appears that this thing may have been buried. Uh, because it has burst out of... There's a clear spot where something has burst itself out of a shallow grave and come out. What you can also see uh, near there is there are likewise uh, graves of... It looks like two other smaller ones and then one. And to say graves, like it's a pit where they've dumped a bunch of people. Uh, and they did not make a lot of effort to try and uh, cover them up. Um, what there is, uh, it looks like it would have been a group of maybe five in total. Uh, if you spend any time observing the bodies, uh, there's early signs of the Verdigris that will wait, uh, make them children of Angelios. Every one of them has signs of violence of some kind. A blade, uh, a... Vericus doesn't recognize the bodies, does he? Like You do not, no. The innkeeper, okay. No, fortunately. That really... <laughs> yeah. Because maybe we should uh, dispose of them. Yeah, I feel we should burn them hmm. so they don't return like that other creature. Yeah. Okay. So you're able to uh, do get that uh, together. Um, there's, like I said, there's enough broken like wood and stuff down here too. You're just gonna burn down here, or you're gonna try and the one concern that uh, Farrakis may have is that uh, the the as I said, like the that the curse of Anhelios is is infectious and it is catchy. Um, there is actually um, techniques that you can be inflicted with that re relate to the curse of Anhelios or some other similar things. Yeah, well, there's a broken up wagon outside that we could build a ramshackle pyre for them. Yeah. But it's probably soaking wet. Yeah. Down here mm -hmm. it is dry. 
So I don't want to burn um, the place down. Yeah, you would burn the whole place down, unfortunately. I mean, although these things did go up, uh, these bodies are not fully afflicted. So, yeah. Uh, if you are going to tell me the precautions you're going to take to try and avoid getting exposed, then that's, I guess, more what I'm concerned with. Um, well, if we leave them in the shallow graves, we won't have to touch them. That's yeah, but, the good thing. But we couldn't burn them. Uh, why can we burn them in the shallow graves? Because it might catch the place on fire. Because they go up like that. And they're not fully, so they might smolder a bit. Is it is it like in like the is the ground like ground rather than wood? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's a cellar, uh, so there's not like there's no f uh, finished floor or anything. Um. Well, if we check over the place now, if if we was unlucky enough that it caught fire, you know, uh, unfortunately the owners don't need this place anymore. It's a bit of a ramshackled. It's ruin, it's, it hasn't been burned down, so it could potentially be repaired mm. and uh I'm, I'm slightly fond of this place memories well i'm not i'm not putting my uh my life risk moving a few bodies about so mm. Did, does Fericus have like a, a cloak or anything probably yep yeah. um he'll he'll look around uh, and sigh and start taking his cloak off and say, I, I suppose we can use this to pull them up there and we can burn the cloak after. Okay. Yeah, if I think there's no chance, then... Yeah, I'm and if you go, the that. thing is, it will leave you exposed to the elements then, so, like, your toughness checks will be more challenging. Uh, I'm not saying that to deter you from doing it, I'm saying it to reflect that the that's sort of the, like, hard scrabble existence that, that uh, Blackbird's... Yeah, I think he re he realizes the uh, the potential ramifications. Is just he doesn't want to burn the place down. Um, sure. Memories. Yeah, yeah. So. No, that's awesome. Okay, so then, yeah, you uh, uh, after some effort, uh, Farakas, you're able to drag uh, all of these out and you give these bodies a proper uh, burial. Why don't you, Farakas, give us a three chaos dice check, please? Nice. Okay. You are undisturbed. Uh, for the entire thing. I think this takes probably most of your morning. Uh, so it's, uh, with some effort, you get the the wood going, but you're going to, yeah, easily uh, burn these things. And I think with how fast the bodies go, you realize that uh, the infection, uh, or the curse, I suppose, is uh, was further along than what it appeared. Gotcha. Um, but in that hidden place, uh, you are, one upside to this is you are able to recover four patronage worth of spoils. Mm. So that means you could cash that in, for instance, and get yourself a dagger or a long sword or a oh, set of clock. armor, <laughs> or you can use that to finance uh, living in a, uh, a nicer part for a shorter period of time, at least something that you can uh, use. So then, um, what do you guys intend on doing with the rest of your day? Pray it doesn't rain and move towards town. Yeah. How far away from town did we think? Uh, it's uh, several days from uh, Culvendine, oh, right. but there are, um, as long as they're still active, there are still uh, towns between there and Culvendine. Uh, Norham's not far away, and Kingsboro is not far away. Is there any um, bed sheets or anything upstairs that would help us with improving our lean to sort of approach? Sure. I mean, you, you haven't checked uh, upstairs yet. Why don't you give us uh, give us a um, I think an awareness check at plus 20. Please. Yeah, right there, right there. You could spend a fortune point reroll if you like. Um, yeah, oh, I am oh. I'm sick of that rain, man. I want something <laughs> to prove, prove our critical success. There you go. So, in fact, you find a perfect tarpaulin, something that will just be ideal for sleeping out of the rain. Uh, as long as you aren't uh, disturbed in your evening, we'll actually count it as a comfortable place to sleep. That's the critical, the nature of the critical success. Yeah, Ferica says you are beloved by the dead gods. Woman. Yeah, there'd be, there'd be a cheer from upstairs when, when okay. that's found. And what you, uh, 
then uh, let's see here with your critical success you see you've got that and what you can hear outside uh, is the sound of men speaking it sounds like the the voice is carrying from a little further off up the road but you can hear the sound of through the broken windows in here um, mm. it sounds like men are approaching I shall obviously alert Ericus as soon as I hear that. Okay. And can we get a, a spy out of one of the sort of first floor windows? Oh, one thing too is you guys, up? without spending any uh, fortune points, you guys could have, uh, during your rekindling, uh, swapped out your techniques if you want. I don't know if you want to keep this, you can feel free to keep the same one slotted, but you do have that option at every rekindling. I think I will go with the unblinking eye for this morning. Okay. So what does the unblinking eye give you? Uh, there you go. Okay. Plus 10 to range uh, tests and target attacks so long as they're unaware of your location. Okay. Once per round after an ally. So a target. Okay. All right. Uh, so you hear them coming. What do you guys wish to do? Like you want to go to the window and look? Uh, or I want to, yeah, peek out. I don't want to sort of, I obviously don't want them to see us if, if we can. Yeah. I want to see. I think of the two of you, you know that Farrakis is probably sneakier. Do you want to let him do yeah. that, or...? Yeah, I shall get his attention and say, can you maybe keep an eye on him, see see what they're about? Okay. Yeah. He will He will go to raise his cloak over his head and forget that it's not there anymore. And yeah. Walk, slink over the window <laughs> and look out. That's great stuff. So, Farrakis, <laughs> would you give us a... Um, What do you think of the ways this yeah, can go and wrong? Actually, I'm going to do this here because uh, I am indulging in some fate weaver bullshittery here. So, My, my fear is it's the uh, army looking for deserters. Okay, what you can see is mm -hmm. that uh, outside uh, Farrakis, uh, well, first off, uh, Farrakis, would you give us a uh, stealth check and we'll give you a plus 20 because of the situation. It's critical success. So what the critical success means as well, in attacks and in defenses, on a critical success, they cannot defend. And a critical success always trumps, regardless of how good the degree of success is or whatnot, critical success always trumps a regular success. Sublime <laughs> success always trumps the other. Imagining that he's sneaking towards the window and looking out, the the clouds part just enough to get sun in their eyes and illuminate them for me to see. Yeah, yeah, quite um, clearly. And then they couldn't see me. So what you see <laughs> is that there are four armsmen. These are mercenary guards uh, who are part of different. Uh, knee, you know, hired by different nations. I'll put two down here, so we got all four up. They're walking along. Uh, they are armed with a mix of what you see here: a sword. Uh, two, there's one with a. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, two with pikes, one with a long sword, and one with a light crossbow. And. Uh, that maybe uh, here's an aspect of the critical success you'll get here, Farrakis, is uh, even at this range, it looks pretty likely that the crossbow that the guy's carrying, it would fit that bolt that Adelaide pulled from the wall perfectly. And they seem to be just idly chatting. There's the two with the pikes, uh, uh, you know, um, over their shoulders. The one has a long sword, it's uh, sheathed, and the other one is wearing, uh, carrying the crossbow. And they're stomping around. They're about uh, maybe a quarter mile off from where you are right now. What do you do, Farrakis? There weren't any of the colors of the uh, army we just left? Uh, they are not. And they're coming from the direction that uh, you will be heading. Okay. From Colvin Dean. Well, I tell uh, Adelaisa, um, we got four here. Looked like mercs that might have been the ones that stayed here recently. Hmm. They all have so matching you... colors on, so they're probably part of some kind of local warlord or whatnot. It's, you've seen this shit before in, in uh, you know, since the uh, Betrayer's War started. Um, thugs, basically, that throw in with one, uh, you know, one guy or another. You served behind, or uh, behind, you served alongside probably men like this. Men I and women. avoiding these people, what about you? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not sure I like the odds, especially with you in a weakened condition. Well, just slept wrong. It'll go away. Hmm. Yeah, he says, well, we could head out the back. I think I know a, a path to get out of this um, direct line of sight, but who knows how the, the years have treated it. Hmm. Maybe we could spy on them from a distance, see what they're up to. Okay, so there's something a little bit more to this. They're likely to search the place, and if, if they are like those we serve with, they will confiscate what we found for their own uses. It seems like, if, if, if you're right, that they're the ones that had these bolts. They've been here before. Do you think they might have killed the previous inhabitants and buried them? It's possible. Hmm. That's why I was curious to see what what they do when they arrive. When they you see need to make any other rolls right now. Like you can picture uh, what I'm picturing is that uh, Adelaide is sort of further back in this room, uh, you know, uh, and whispering to Farrakis, who's looking outside and watching these guys approach. Uh, they hmm. are coming directly towards the. Um, and tell me when you want to interact with with your own stuff. You'll see them approach the inn, and then they'll walk up towards the inn and be looking down. And out from outside, you hear one of them, hey, there's fresh tracks. And the other one says, well, fresh payday then. <laughs> and you hear That's... the shing as one draws a long sword. And the others sort of lean, you know, take a step back and put their pikes out as if they're taking a position. The other one brings the crossbow out and you can hear uh, the one and he doesn't seem to be looking at you. Like he still is completely unaware of where you are, Fericus. Uh, yells up at the uh, at the um, place. All right, whoever's in there, come out. Oh, it's intimidate time. We're going. We're going to flee at least. Um, I'm going to try to use my skull duggery to imitate the sound of the, uh, the the ghoul as he goes around to intimidate them from the window. Like it's stomping around inside. Okay. So expecting okay. danger as they come in. Sure. And hold then, on. Uh, so let's. We'll make that. Um, let's see, I think that is a. I think we should definitely flee, though. I don't want to fight four of these things. <laughs> Not without rules. Uh, well, if we could take out. Take out the range guy. I'm confident I could take the rest. Yeah, a lone wolf uh, would be triggered by being outnumbered. Uh, so he does an extra uh, dice of damage, and your longsword ability, um, that defense thing, spends one, and then he banks. Um, that Eleanor's spite. Where they, they yeah, just and get how, killed yeah, yeah. If they come in close. <laughs> okay. So I'm trying to find if there is. Uh, a similar thing to the War of Words that you have in uh, Flames of Freedom, and I don't think there is actually. So, um, what we'll do is let's see here. So, uh, can you use? Uh, I forget, John. Can you use your? Uh, does your talent allow you to use Skullduggery for Intimidate as well intimidate as Intimidate and, and Charm? Fuck, yeah. awesome. Okay, cool. Then, uh, why don't you give us? And a skullduggery check. Okay. A typical challenge? Um, it'll be standard. Yeah, yeah, standard zero. Okay, dice gods. We need some... Ooh. That's a pretty good roll. So what is it you're, you're specifically doing? Um, I'm trying to imitate the sounds of the ghoul that we heard yeah. as it's slapping and uh, uh, going around it. And then at the very end of it, a screech like somebody got hit with the acid and it's melting. Okay. So that sounds like that, and they're all sort of looking back and forth at one another, uh, and they're like, "What is? What is? Oh. They're not. They don't seem to be quite sure as to what is going on here." Um, let me make a resolve check for them. Uh, what is your? Um, what is your skulldarkey's agility? Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, what's your agility bonus? Your AB. Seven. Seven. So that is a twelve that you rolled for that. So that is pretty good. 
Come back to my, where are they here? Here we go. Okay. Uh, the resolve is a 50. Let's see how they're doing here. Okay, so one is holding okay, holding okay. One of them <laughs> screams and runs. That's a critical failure. Uh, the other one is disheartened. So I, I'm going to apply, impose. Let me see if there's a. Let's see the conditions for this. Um, I want to make him stunned until he makes a successful check. So it'll be one less AP that he has per round. So, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, four. So on a one or a two, it's a pike, uh, pikeman who runs. Uh, on a three, it's the longsword. On a four, it's the crossbow. One of the pikemen turns, drops the pike, and then races off. The other, uh, and then the one that is, uh, let's see here, the one that is 1S AP uh, is one of the pikemen. So you stay, th those two are the cowards with a distance weapon, probably, perhaps not a surprise. One of the pikemen goes racing off. Uh, the other one remains. Uh, the others are like, hey. <laughs> Get out here now, or we're coming in. And you won't like it when we come in. Let me do this, guys. I'm just thinking, is there multiple rooms upstairs? Most definitely, yeah. I'm just thinking if I could draw them in, maybe you could, you know, come in with your sneaky skills. So let's do this. Why don't you guys each Catch click me. on your token and go ahead and roll initiative for this round. Yeah, I think we should definitely... And I won't forget to track it this time. Nice, Adelaisa. Come on. Oh. All right. So, but there's always next round. Adelaisa, you have three actions. What are you doing? So they're, they're still outside, aren't they? Yeah, you can picture you're inside. Yeah. Uh, it's, you've still got... I'm assuming you're sort of closer to the far end. They're standing... Let me point the... Give me a little pointer thing here. Am I on the right level? I am. So they're probably standing like right around here, outside this place, yelling up at you guys. I'm picturing you guys being back like over here somewhere, poking out. And I don't think that you've necessarily, they haven't necessarily spotted you yet. They've heard that the sound of ghouls and the sound of something melting, you know, in there, or the sound of uh, some crazy creature in there that caused one of them to flee. Um, and actually I'll put a little dot on these. So one of them's gone. Um, but they haven't, um, they haven't made any effort to move in. As far as, uh, like, how many actions it would take, like, it would take them probably, uh, one, two, like, three or four rounds for them to get upstairs if they're moving cautiously and, like, opening the doors and stuff like that. So you can sort of judge think, that you've got that much time. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that the, uh... Vericus's sort of attempts to confuse them and that has probably worked quite well by the sounds of it. Um, so I'm going to stay in this room and I'm going to go to the window. Uh, I'm gonna, help me, help me! I'm being attacked by this creature! <laughs> give and us I'm going to give away exactly where my position is. Yeah. And, you know, when they're out of sight, I'm going to say... You know, so you go in the other room, and I'll lure him in here, sort of okay. thing. Okay. Why don't you give us a uh, deception check at, uh, let's say, plus 20. Deception. Not deception. Hold on. Yeah. It's called... It's, um... Um, so this is the reason I traveled with this woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guile, guile, a guile check. Oh, it's guile. Yeah, plus 20, okay. please. Yeah. And this is the most, like, ladylike you've heard her sound, or girlish you've heard her sound in the. <laughs> okay. Fabulous. Yeah. They're just like, there's a woman in there. So, uh, and one thing you realize, too, uh, Adelaide, so now that you've seen it, there's no fucking way they're going to be able to use those pikes in this building. So, yeah. at the very least, one of them is going to have to be resorting to a dagger instead of that. So, um, Adelaide, that's only like maybe two of your AP. Do you want to spend the other one to do anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to take me a little while to get in here. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I need to do. Okay. Um, no, no, I'm just going to sort of prepare for okay. them coming. So then for them, uh, they the pikeman goes and leans the pike against the outside of the house and then draws a, a dagger. 
Uh, the longsword guy goes up to the door, throws the door open, uh, and the um, crossbowman uh, is cautiously... Oh, you know what? Actually, the pikeman is going to be behind everyone because he loses one AP. Because he's scared of you. And I just want a critical fail. You know what? When the... <laughs> I just want to go fail for his uh, uh, his resolve check. So I think as soon as the long swordman goes inside and this is a crossbow guy goes inside, the uh, pikeman places the pike up, draws the dagger, takes like two steps up the stairs, and is like, looks at his dagger, uh, fuck this, puts the dagger back and grabs the pike and goes racing after his buddy. You were only dealing with two now, so I can get rid of one of these. And of course, it's the one for the initiative. All right, uh, then it is uh, Farrakis' turn. What are you doing, Farrakis? Three yeah, he's, he's almost beside himself laughing at this particular situation, um, but he stifles it. Uh, he's going to draw out his throwing dagger okay. and take a position in the corner of the room so that he has eyes when they come in. Okay, uh, why don't you give us a... I'm assuming you're trying to hide yourself. Give us a stealth yes. check, please, uh, with uh, no modifier at this point. Okay. I would like to luck point that. Cause yeah, fortune point that sucker. Uh, yeah, I want to be hidden. There we go. There you go. All right. And your AB is what, seven? Yes. Okay, so that's uh, an 11. Uh, they need to be able to detect you. All right. Uh, so then on their turn, uh, it w oh, sorry. Actually, that was end of the round. Uh, let's roll initiative once again. So you guys clicking your token, clicking your initiative. I, and the uh, again, the, the uh, enemies have fixed initiative in this. Okay. Farrakis, you're up first now. Are you just still waiting? Yeah, I'm, I'm basically waiting for them to get into here. Uh, actually, uh, I could still be making noise to, like, keep them thinking that the thing's uh, going around, so he'll just continue, like, hitting against the wall and making sliding sounds. And... Yeah. Give us a... F um, give us a skullduggery check uh, as well, just because you're... Um, I think you're going to have to be doing something tricky so that it's not obvious. You can't be noisy and stealthy at the same time, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but like he, He's picking something up and throwing it against the wall against the other side. Exactly. So go ahead and give us a skullduggery check, please. You going to fortune point that? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to hide again. Yeah, that's so. okay. you got plenty of time. And uh, So that was two actions, right? Uh, that was two actions, yeah. So one more. I'll move to a different spot and then attempt to hide next turn. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, then it is... Um, I, I think I'll let you combine this, the hustle with that. So you, you can just okay. give us... Yeah, let's see what your new... Sna uh, okay, there you go. Uh, so that's a nine they need now. Okay. okay. Adelaza. Um, yeah, I'm just going to stay in the position that they saw me. And I say, hurry, hurry. The creatures are coming. Okay. Uh, and I'm just trying to lure them straight at me. Okay. So when they come in, obviously, Farrakis can ambush them, and I'll yeah. just leave my... Well, I'll, I'll keep my sword in my hand, and I'll give it the old shaking. Arm okay. And all the so then rubbish. it'll be... I'll say uh, they're running, so they're full-on, like, racing up the stairs to try and get to you. Um, I'm going to make a awareness. Ooh. I got a sublime success. I rolled a nat 1 on one of them. Uh, let's see if it's the... F on an evens... It is the longbowman, or the longbowman, the longsword guy. On an odds, it's the crossbowman. So the longsword guy, he's racing up, and then he stops. And uh, Farrakis and Adelaza, why don't you give us a stealth check, please? Come on, dice gods. I'm over here. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, not not a stuff. A an awareness check. Oh, awareness. But those. So Adelaide, you got that would be success. How's your? How does that compare to your awareness? Uh, it, my awareness is ten higher. So. So be sixty. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, so that's a success for you. Okay. Oh, hold on. Is it ten higher because of the skill bonus? Because you still are suffering a. Uh, apprentice plus ten. Right. So because your your peril condition, you're still exhausted. Okay. So yeah. So uh, it still fail. That's okay, Farrakis. You're just like you're really making the best of, of uh, what you're doing. What you can hear, Adelaza, is like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. This is an ambush. Get ready. I'm gonna bring them out. So you, but you hear them say that. So 
um, guys, once you click on your uh, initiative, click your token, click on your initiative, and let's see where who's acting first here. Yeah. Okay. Adelaisa, you're up first. Um, you, they are. They sound to be like um, probably one hustle away from moving in. And are they, are they close to the staircase or? They're in the hallway. They, so the they're hallway, probably okay. a stride. I believe is like a meter or a yard, uh, and the uh, they are probably what's their speed. Their movement is an eight, so they can move eight strides in a round. So they're probably, okay. or in a, in a hustle. So they are probably, um, you know, uh, they could, they're probably close enough to be able to move down and get in on you. Okay. Uh, well, I've obviously worked out that the, uh, the ruse has not worked. So I think I'll take the advantage to them and try and get the first attack in. Mm, so, okay. Um, so... If you want, what there is a combat maneuver called charge uh, hmm. that gives. Is a that plus... a move and an attack? Is it? Or... Yeah, yeah. You, like you, I think you hustle. Uh, let me read it here. Small attack, extinguished. Charge is you move two times your movement. Uh, and if you move at least three, you can strike with a melee weapon on the same turn and add one d ten, one d six to the total damage. Yeah, uh, if if I've got the, if that's the right. That'd distance, be two AP to get up there. Yep. Yeah, so you could just uh, hearing that, you spring into action, you go racing out, uh, and they look as they do in the thing. Oh, the one is a little surprised by you suddenly racing out. So go ahead and give us an attack. Mm. Uh, and you okay, hold on. Uh, let's just quickly set things up properly. Lone Wolf grants you what again? It's uh, extra damage if engaged with multiple foes. Okay, so then for your uh, oh, great. Okay, so yeah, so you're gonna do one extra damage uh, against these. So what you can do is between the charge and the other, you can when you're you click down on, if you go to combat. Yep. And then your longsword, you can increase the fury dice to three. Um, okay, yep. So that's how many d6s you're rolling. It's just, it's, yep. yeah. So uh, okay. then uh, go ahead and make your attack. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so then uh, for them, the longsword guy can try and parry uh, this. Uh, let's see here. This is, you had no modifiers to it, so he's just rolling his flat 70% to try and parry. Uh, so he is able to, uh, you know, clatter this to the side. Um, because he did save, mm, yeah, he got a sublime success. He would have been able to, he would have been smart and saved one. All right, you still have one more AP. Uh, Adelaide, so uh, you... I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my guard sort of uh, stance to okay to try and parry or dodge any. So then uh, this guy uh, on his turn, so the crossbow one is is uh, positioned behind the guy with the long sword who's facing you. He is gonna try and hit you seventy percent. Uh, so that's a hit. Uh, you can go ahead and give us a parry. <laughs> There's no modifiers here. Parry should be above uh, on the combat. combat. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Dodge parry. Yeah, it should be 69, I think, for you. Easy, yeah. So he swings his longsword. Yours is up, and you batter it aside. He's going to attack a second time. This is minus 10, which means you'll get plus 10 to your parry. So he has 60% chance. That's a hit. So go ahead. You get plus 10 to your parry. So I'll just put it in as routine. Oh, you want to fortune point that? Uh, yeah, I think I should. Okay. Nice. That's a side as well. And then for his final uh, thing, he is going to keep his defenses. Uh, he's going to save one for defenses. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy with the crossbow, I think, is going to try and shoot you. Uh, he has. 
60% chance to try and hit you. And then you can dodge this because your defenses. So he does hit. Schwack! Uh, you can give us a dodge uh, at mm -hmm. your... So if you switch... Oh, I think... Yeah, wait, is it is it displayed as both? Uh, there's two. There's dodge and parry. Oh, awesome. Second. Okay, yeah. yeah go ahead yeah. and give us a dodge check. Uh, yeah, I found that one. Uh, you want to hear our fortune point that? Um... Do I know if crossbows are particularly deadly? Would I know? Crossbow would do 1d2, because we're all learning here, 1d6 plus 6. Oh, it's fast, so it actually gives you minus uh, 1, or minus 10 to your dodge as, as well. Ah, uh, so it should be for... Oh, I'm going to take that, because I don't think... Take the, the hit? Okay, so let me roll yeah, damage only, here. Uh, I'm so actually on 35. 1d6, exclamation mark, plus 6. Okay, let's see here. 10. How does that compare to your damage threshold? Uh, it's, it's one, basically, yeah. Okay, so you're down to, when we slow down one, you're not suffering any, no chance of any wounds. So you are able to get out of the way, but it grazes, kind of cuts your uh, your armor. He then has to spend two actions reloading. That's it for the enemies. So Farrakis, you heard them uh, get out there. You heard the clatter, chang, 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 of swords back and forth, and then the distinctive thwack of a crossbow being fired. Mm -hmm. What are and you doing? Probably a, a grunt of impact. Um, uh, can Didn't I, actually uh, hit. Remember, like until the way the game damage works in this damage condition, you can think of it more as like a wearing down of your defenses. Gotcha. Until you suffer actual injuries, or until you're slain, yeah, you're not actually dead. Okay. So okay. Uh, can I attempt to to roll out of the room and uh, cover in the hallway, uh, so they don't see me? Yeah. Give us a stealth check. Let's see how. Uh... Let's try that. Okay, uh, you rolled better than I did with my defenses, so perhaps uh, um, Adelaza has sort of moved this into a, moved them into a position. Okay. Uh, so um, one, so that's one AP to get out there. Or what do you want to do with the other two? Yep. I would like to buy a point of AP. Okay. And then activate the um, skewing shot with my throwing dagger, and okay. try to take that cross movement out. Nice. Why don't you click on your thing? My extinguishing combat action. Incredible. So as he's re reloading, he looks up and he sees a dagger flying right at his throat. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's amazing. So, schwuck, and he drops down dead. Uh, then it is uh, Adelaide's. Oh, no, now initiative. Go ahead and roll it. Click on your token. Click on initiative, guys. Okay, he had his badass moment for the game session. I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's something I, I do really like about the the extinguishing actions are a fucking super cool way to let the... Oh, no. Uh, to really make you feel like heroes. Now, you can also, remember, spend a fortune point to jump up in the initiative order. The only one that really matters for is for Farrakis. Because Farrakis would jump uh, ahead of this guy with the longsword. Do you want to spend is a fortune point, point per ahead? fortune point? Is yeah, uh, well, I'm out of throwing weapons. Um, but yes, I would, I'll would. i do that. Okay. Should jump ahead of him. So then you are acting... Uh, <clears throat> so you race in that hallway. And, like, he throws in and throws his dagger, and then he stops up, and then he's going to, I think, take an action to draw both of his shivs. Okay, yeah, you have this. You have your full three AP once again. Okay, so he'll, he'll run in there and he'll uh, attempt to... Now, let me check something. I, I noticed in uh, the newest edition of Zweihander, it isn't an action to draw a weapon. So let me see okay. if that's the case here. Because if you can draw it for free, uh, then that's... Uh... Yeah, loading weapons costs AP... I think it's free. Okay. So he'll, uh, he'll move up into okay. a flanking position, get both of his shivs so, out. So that'd be one AP to get into uh, flanking. And shivs are free. Yep. And then he's going to try to uh, attack him with his, his shivs. Go ahead. So you'll get plus 10 to hit here. And remember, yeah, I'm assuming you're using the better shiv, and we'll add plus yeah. one damage as well because you got uh, an offhand weapon. Okay, so routine for the extra 10%. Okay, you want to spend yeah, that last that fortune point, or I'm saving the fortune point and uh, saving an AP. 
I got some pretty awesome uh, moment or misfortune spends here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saving. Okay, so that means you still have one more. Um, actually, you could take another attack if you like at about minus I'm ten. Saving it for defenses and or another ability. Okay, sounds good. All right, so then this guy's turn. Uh, I have. Oh, he hasn't suffered any injuries yet, so I can't use that. And the reason is, I, I don't know if Adelaide's dodge and parry thing from her last turn still works, because it's a new initiative. Until my next turn, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's what it says, until. Let's see. Okay. Uh, all right, so on can... his turn, uh, what he's going to do is... Um... Mm. Longsword, incidentally, I forgot about this. Sorry, guys. Uh, the longsword is defensive, which I believe... Uh, I believe, I believe, grants plus 10 to parries. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, so you you actually would have... Uh, that you're, it would help you with the dodging the crossbow bolt, but... All right, so then uh, first this guy is going to turn and attack... Uh, his first attack is going to be on Farragus. Okay. Uh, so I have a 70% uh, chance on this. Uh, I actually have to spend a fortune point, or misfortune, to re-roll, because I missed... So under combat for dodge and parry, right? Uh, yeah. And, oof, I hit with the second one, not not a crit or anything. So he spins in. He's going to connect with the Afericus. You want to spend that AP to, to parry? Yes. What do I roll for that? Uh, you re roll your uh, your melee. Just under so, initiative. Yeah, whatever the melee. I, I think I, for each of you guys, I just put one uh, melee skill. Okay. Whatever one you're tra I mean, you don't have the training anyway. A dodge, then. I'll go no, no, you can't higher. dodge. It dodges only for ranged. Oh, yeah. Okay. Parry then. Okay. Uh, flanking doesn't give wait, me wait, any wait, bonus. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, it? hold up, hold up. Let me make sure. Uh, I can't it's remember if you can use either. I think in this game you can use either dodge or parry. Let me make, make doubly sure. It's in the others. So I want you to, if you're better at dodge, which I think you are. Yeah. Quite a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. You can use dodge or parry. Okay. I will choose dodge, even though the dice hate me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they don't. Fine. So you get out of the way of that one. All right. Uh, so unfortunately, that is your last AP, and you don't have any more. He's going to follow up. I'll roll this one in chat. I now have a 60% chance to hit you with this follow-up. Here we go. Fuck. So then um, he does 1D... Uh... 1d6 plus 6, once again. Oh, okay. lord. Uh, 6, uh, exploding, plus 6. Let's see. How does that compare? Okay, 1, 2. I'm seriously wounded now. Seriously wounded, so would you give us a t roll 2 chaos dice, please? Do not roll chaos. Well, that's a uh, tall order on this particular day for roll 20. Yeah! <laughs> no injuries. So you're just, it's, you're, oh, come back. The, the uh, remnants of your clothes are torn by this guy's attack. Um, then he has one more. Or, ah, he's going to save one AP for a defense. Uh, then it, it, or I could spend, you know what? No, no, I'm going to, so let's live large here, guys. I'll spend to get an extra AP here. Let's do one more attack on Farrakis. This is a 50%. Yeah. Miss! Whew. That narrow hit was enough to get you out of the way, Farrakis. Adelaza, <laughs> your turn. What are you doing? This thing is flanked, so you'll plus 10 to hit on this guy. Uh, I'm just going to step in. and um, I'm going to step in front of Farrakis. Uh, and I know it says on here that the Blackbird circles their enemy. But I'm just going to sort of cut him off in the corridor. Yep. Uh, sort of. May I so make a suggestion? Take a look at your um, your long sword thing. Mm -hmm. Take a look at Song of Steel. Song of Steel. It's the extinguishability. Yeah. I haven't actually got that one out though. But. You can spend a fortune point to re to you haven't extinguished your thing. You can swap out oh, techniques, okay. spend one fortune point, and then take advantage of it right away. It doesn't cost you oh, any okay. actions. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I'll switch out then, yeah. If okay. I can do that. Yeah. So then what does it look like okay. as you just shift your stance? Um, yeah, you see that um, she's been in a very defensive sort of, like I say, sort of fencing mode. Um, and and she sort of just, you can see a grip change on the on the sword. Yeah. Where, and she gets like a grimace on her face when she sees Fericus, who's been having a particularly bad few days gets hit uh and she just says that's enough and she just comes forward and just plows his sword straight into his chest uh it's only at that moment that this uh this uh you know mercenary realizes that you had been holding back on your attacks and he slumps down dead at your feet she had an extinguishing attack too yes that's cool. Yeah, and it's also spent a uh, a fortune point to swap out because she needed to use yeah. the other one. Yeah, Farragut looks down at his ripped shirt and the the line of blood just from the near miss, and he goes, "I got three of them." Let's <laughs> do right away. Uh, so what? Uh, let's see here. There is also um, I don't know, just because we can take advantage of these rules quickly in our closing. I think you can do. Take their uh, daggers, because I need more daggers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there is a longsword uh, on these guys. Uh, they each have a, a, sh a shiv on them, not a dagger. Um, there is... Oh, yeah, and the, the other one's fled. They also have on them armor. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wish to uh, uh, upgrade your armor, Adelaide, you may have an opportunity to do that. Although you'll be wearing, you know, uh, armor... Of this, uh, whatever this, uh, whatever petty warlord that they happen to serve. Do they have cloaks? They do. I'm um, taking. They are marking of that of their armor though, like of their uh, army. That's okay. I'll take them, turn them inside out, and put one in for storage. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. And uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Injuries. Uh, take their shivs too. Okay. They're undamaged. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, now you're you're gonna need to. Yeah, you're gonna need to treat your weapons. Uh, now that you've been in a fight today, you will need to treat your weapons when you rekindle next, because they go down to warm after a fight. And here we go. Binding wounds. Okay, so would you like... Uh, Farrakis is the only one who's injured here. Uh, Adelaide, would you like to give us a heal test at plus 10? Plus 10. Oh, wait, do you have, you have a bandage on you? I don't think we have anything. Um, These guys probably have... have bandages on them, so you can take one of them. Okay. Okay, use that. So go ahead and give us a heal at plus 10. Oh, narrow. That's a success. Success is success. You can move yourself one up. On the damage condition, Farrakis. So I'm as equally damaged as I am periled. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, so then, with you getting that bandaging up and with um, you guys deciding, you know, what to do next, you've got the bodies of four local, seems uh, local soldiers on you right now. You've stolen some stuff off of them, but... What happens next? We'll have to see what happens next time, uh, because that nice. brings the taxmen session to an end. So, guys, uh, first session of Blackbird. Yeah, go ahead, John. Uh, I want to um, take one of the bodies, kind of smash open the window where the the woman was. Uh, well, Adeline was calling from, and just slump them over the glass so that if their friends come by, they can see the body in the window. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> That's it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, guys, that was your first introduction to Blackbirds. Well, what did you think of Blackbirds? Trial by fire. <laughs> I think eighty percent of our roles were failures. Yep. At least. <laughs> I liked it. It was it was fun. Yeah, you can see the similarities, obviously, between that and Flames of Freedom. Yeah, but I, there are some subtle differences, uh, I, I, especially with the you know multiple attacks and things, uh, and the techniques were they were very interesting. The techniques. I do the, like the techniques. In the combat. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the 
extinguishing combat actions, those those are great. Extinguishing them, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do like the setting quite a bit, even though I haven't delved through the book all the way to get it, though. Um, just because I tend to like more fantasy oriented stuff than you know um, his, historical fantasy. Yep. So I like the the kind of grim dark and high low and high fantasy thing. So nice. yeah, I would like to try out the magic. So. Yeah, I did like the sound of the um, the creatures having their unique abilities. I always like yeah, it when cool. creatures have unique abilities. One uh, of the abilities, the um, if they're doom points or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, one of the things that the um, uh, what do you call it? Guards. The uh, those guys you were fighting could do is if I had five that I would didn't have any use for, blow a battle horn and more come in. Yeah. I'm so glad I scared them away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the only bit of the uh, session that went well. It's the last <laughs> encounter, yeah. Well, it's always tough when, when uh, you know, d d uh, poor dice rolls just, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad mm. to see you guys could see the game through the shitty luck you had with the dice rolls uh, through it. It's actually the, the the bad rolls help me see the, the flaws in the system better than anything, and it helps me get in the mindset of the character just how they would react better. So, yeah. And I was feeling Farragut. I like him. Nice, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't get to trigger your hidden stuff uh, yet. The ability to to uh, see. Oh yeah, the hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and anything is just, there's just there's like eight or nine pages worth of, of boons you can choose from as a, just as humans, and there's mm -hmm. different ones for each other things. Uh, there's like six or seven things for each tier for each of the. Um, uh, each of the techniques and talents uh, for the different paths and there's some general ones and there's weapon ones that you just need to have training in the weapon in order to, to take them so you know lots of ways to have lots of uh, cool um, like uh, options for building your character and then also for deciding what you want to be using at the table at the time yeah mm. awesome well that is great guys I, I had a shit ton of fun running it once again yeah, that was, uh, I, I would play this again Nice. Hmm. Well, our Blackbirds of Yule event uh, starts on December 21st and runs to the New Year. So we're going to have a, lots of opportunity to play Blackbirds throughout that. Nice. Nice. Awesome. And then, that... Yeah, and Darren's will finally, the UK release is uh, about two weeks off right now, a little less than that. <laughs> so he'll finally have his copy delivered. <laughs> all of our, uh, uh, all of the players in our player roster have copies of uh, either they have copies of Blackbirds now, or they will have copies arriving soon because we're going to be spending the holidays in the Carcass Nations. So, well, that's great, guys. I'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed. I obviously like I, I love this game. I've had so much fun with uh, reading it and prepping it and and uh, running it. Is just it's a really really fun thing. The extinguish abilities in particular, I I love that you get a chance to be like, nope, fuck this, we're done. It's a very cool way to be like, nope, this is, <laughs> this one is done now. Yeah, I was uh, debating whether using the other one just to get out of the entire combat. I was like, I want to see the system in play, so we're doing the the other technique today. Yeah, so. yeah, but it's dangerous too, right? Like that. That's um... no joke. Yeah. <laughs> one, one good blow will take you out. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, so then, for those listening at home, we'll be back. Uh, so this is was to be one of our regular um, Legacy of the Crystal Shard games. In two weeks' time, we believe we'll be back to that. Um, if not, well, we may have uh, some more time in uh, Blackbirds. Oh no, we, we haven't talked about it, but we'll. Uh, there's also um, uh, you. You basically get enough XP from each session to be able to get, especially at uh, first tier, to get new advancements right away. So you get to pick like new techniques or new talents or raise some bonuses or train in skills. So. There's some cool stuff you get to start doing. It, it, it does that thing that I love about a lot of RPGs where you get to see off, like early and often development uh, early on, and then that slows off as you get hot, more powerful. So, yeah, and you get more versatility rather than just more powerful. Okay, so so I could peruse my book in the next two weeks and see what I want for the new technique if we're playing this Exactly, again. exactly. Cool. So, perfect. Uh, all right, so then for those listening at home, we'll be... Uh, back again, either in the Carcass Nations or in the um, uh, the Icewind Dale in uh, two weeks' time. But until then, uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the setting, uh, or the uh, game we're playing, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, you can also find a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server. We have a channel there dedicated to assorted games where we've been chatting up uh, Blackbirds, and we have channels there dedicated to every other game we run on the channel. There's also a bunch of other great 
channels like finding a group or discussing, you know, DM advice or um, convention information. Lots of great people over there. You are more than welcome to join us. Um, there is also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages, which is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really terrific organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children. And all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. Now it goes to any middleman or any or the channel. Uh, it only goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services, uh, which includes ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. Uh, as a small way of saying thank you for generosity of the donors, uh, in December we'll be having our next charity raffle, and every $25 Canadian that you've donated since June of 2000, June 15 of 2022 uh, will give you one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next raffle. Um, you can see what we gave away in our last raffle if you head on over to the Charity Initiatives channel and see there. Um, there's also, uh, yeah, we also have later this afternoon our next charity session. Uh, we're pretty much done those for the year, but starting next year we'll be setting up more charity sessions and uh, the donors have a chance to vote on the how those uh, games come together. So we have a session uh, of Modifius Entertainment's outstanding Conan Adventures in an Age Undreamed of this afternoon. And we'll be playing a Conan the Pirate style adventure set on the Stygian coast, thanks to our generous donors who voted for those things. So in the new year, we'll be kicking that off once again with some new options and new charity sessions. The last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our two stalwart Blackbirds. So Darren and John, thank you so much for playing today, guys, and for joining our flock of Blackbirds. I had an enormous amount of fun prepping this and running this. So thanks, guys. This is yeah, very, very quickly becoming one of my favorite games to write uh, and run. Uh, so I am really glad that I was able to introduce the game to you guys. Oh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed. Nice. <laughs> then uh, we'll be back again uh, in um, two weeks' time uh, in either the Carcass Nations or the Icewind Dale. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and see the troubles that our stalwart Blackwords are encountering on the road to Culbandine. And uh, until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.